So are you just streaming Facebook separately at the same time through computer then? Oh, I'm not streaming to Facebook at all. Today. Oh, just, just YouTube? And Twitch, yeah. Okay. It's finally Friday, I'm free again. I got my motor running for a wild weekend. We're gonna start in a couple minutes. Um, we are just getting set up. Hello, Red Sea. Hello, Burn Dog. Hello, Vorin's Girl. That's right. You can start. I'm here. That's right. As long as you're... <laughs> that's all you need. One Burn Dog and we're... we're Good hitting, to go. Hitting it, hitting it big. Are you seeing the comments up on Yeah. Cool. That's good. Yeah, so far. Oh, all Twitch. Oh, come on, YouTube. Where you at? Oh, and YouTube. Switch on Twitch. Oh, there's got one YouTube. Hello, Dennis. Dennis? Dennis, right? Dennis. There's only one in. Just go through faster. Yeah. I don't know. I have an extra letter in my name that I don't use, so I think it's, it's redundant. D E N I S versus D E N N I S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you have two M A T T. Do you pronounce that different than M A T? Uh, I do personally. But <laughs> most people can't decipher it. Really get behind that T. Yeah. Either they can't tell or they don't care. It's a shame. But. We actually named my son Maxwell, and we on his birth certificate wrote down one L. Oh really? Yep. Intentionally? But, yeah. Okay. Was, uh, I got that extra A, and I've just it just sits there. You know, mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything it's special. A waste of pencil. Like it is. So graphite. if you're why why do that to my kid? Yeah. It was just M A X W E L one. You get one. That's all I need. <laughs> Can do with one L what other Maxes do with two. Yeah. <clears throat> what if you did Maximilian? Would it be two Ls? Yeah, I feel like the L between the two vowels does something with mil, mil, million versus million? I don't know. Maxi thousand. <laughs> Pause button. Okay. One more minute. Oh, never mind. It just changed. Huh? Wow, here we go. Okay. Let's get rolling. <laughs> Oh, up, now you're now you're in too far. Oh, now he's gonna trip over the cord. Oh no! There we go. Uh, now he's back on the holographic stand. Right. Mark it out of here. It's time to start. 
All right, happy Friday, everybody. How's everybody's Friday doing, going so thus far? I've had a hectic Friday. It's already been a long day, so. It's actually kind of came sliding into this just a short time ago, so. It's good, I'm all prepared and I'm totally, totally focused. But that'll be fun. That'll be part of the, part of the whole thing is, you know, not that we normally aren't winging it, but really winging it. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if I've ever been focused, fully focused. <laughs> but if you bring the focus, I can bring the... I'll see what happens. The distraction. Extra coffee should help me stay focused. Mm -hmm. All right. So, howdy, guys. Red Sea, Burn Dog, Born's Girl. Red Sea again. You get two, two welcomes. Dennis. Um, hope you guys are doing good. This is going to be fun. So... Oh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I got things out of order here. Like I said, I'm, I'm sliding in right now. Um, no. Let's, uh, let's take a look at something else real quick. Let's. You guys know where I'm going. We're going to hop on over to 3D Warehouse. And we are going to take a peek at, you guys probably already guess it, Best bus ever. Ooh. <gasps> Woo! New stuff. Whoa. That's so exciting. All right, let's check out what we got going on here. All right, we got. Yes. Oh, dang. <laughs> I'm already, I'm scared just looking at it. Absolutely proof. So not only is it murdered out, we got this black oh my sweetness. We have a. Uh, Looks like a wheelchair lift there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, big, big, big wheels. Big, respectable wheels. Dice, fuzzy dice hanging from the rearview mirror. And... <laughs> Gotta have it. Horns. <laughs> That's... I, I thoroughly respect that. Thank you, Brian S. I appreciate... I appreciate that. It's a great one. Thanks for throwing that up there. All right, moving along. We have uh, the SketchUp bus. Ooh. Or the base camp bus, really, is what it should call from John S. Base camp 2020. It's it's labeled. It's official. I love the SketchUp on the hood. I like the the red and white. It's awesome, and it looks like you got some uh, got some team members in there inside the bus. Oh, nice. Yeah, taking it on the road. That's that is good. I respect that as well. This is I'm I'm pretty happy today. This is pretty good. And we got one more check out. I'll put some shorts on, some pants on you, fool. <laughs> You're gonna catch that, a cold. <laughs> that's quite a bus, and a lot of work has been done to it. Man, that's <laughs> awesome. Look at the windows. I love the rendered uh, green finish there. More headlights, and you know what to do with. Yeah, that's some pretty looking paint. That is that is shiny, shimmery, shimmery green. Plenty of room for luggage up top. Look at that luggage rack. That thing is <laughs> hefty. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! All right, I'm much, I'm much, uh, I'm much happier this week than I was last week. I mean, still, it'd be nice to finish out the month with maybe you know two dozen models to choose from, but um, we got something going. Something's it's moving along. We're up to five. That's that's not un, that's not bad. That's good. So great job, guys! Thank you. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Roll them in. All right. So on to the order of today. We are going to do some machining today. So what we're going to look at is uh, when I said steam, when we're going to look at a steam engine, and I mean literally like a steam engine, the device that takes the pressure of steam and converts it into locomotion. Not a steam engine as in the beginning part of a train, which that actually is a steam locomotive that runs off of a steam engine. So oh, I was here for the trains. So I know. I know. I'm sorry. Mm. If we hear that enough, maybe we'll make a train next time. Check it, check it. Toot, toot. I always wanted to be a conductor <laughs> when I was a kid. You know, conductor's a weird thing because yeah. you can conduct a train or a symphony, and they seem fairly far apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that not as much uh, new Not a lot of crossover and, there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think of any place. I mean, I'd rather be a train conductor because you can say, all aboard. You can't do that when you're a symphony. I guess you could, but you could. people wouldn't take you as seriously. It would be, so be an interesting crossover method, though. And yeah. That's probably, there's probably a name for that little stick, right? It's a 
baton, I believe. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm. Gavel? That's what I use. That may be totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, baton sounds right. That's a, yeah, it's a uh, conductor's baton. No, now that I'm saying it, I feel stupid like that's totally wrong. So <laughs> let us know because, you know, because we're here to learn. So help us learn. But this is what we're going to try to make today and get through as much of this as possible. And I've done a couple of these before. I've made a, f a few uh, models of kind of desktop miniature steam engines. These actually come from, uh, I found these online. Um, they're, they're all kind of by the same person, JWB Drafting Services in New Zealand. Um, and I've been through a couple, they're really cool. And I think the thing that got me here to this is that pretty much looks like a SketchUp model, right? I mean, this looks like yeah. some stock wood and some standard colors. The cool thing is these the plans that are up here. Oh, thank you. Um, the thing they conduct with is called a flappy stick. So I appreciate <laughs> knowing that. See, I've learned something. Is that what <laughs> Flappy Bird was based off of? That's right. Know. It's a lowbrow version of the, uh, the orchestra, I guess. Yeah. So these plans, this is a four sets. Um, or, or four sheets, four sheet PDF, and I'm like almost 100% sure that this is, is sketch. It might not be, but it looks very sketch up to me. So that's kind of what drew me into this. The cool thing, what I really like about these plans, and I would suggest doing this, if, if, you, if you do a Google search on Steam Engine JW, JDW, you'll get these files. The reason they're so cool is they are basically machining files or plans, machining plans. So all the information's on here, all the dimensions are on there, millimeter precision, um, or actually say quarter millimeter, and they're just really good practice in SketchUp. So if you want something that's not terribly demanding, it's, it's, it's a, a, a project you could jump into without a ton of SketchUp experience, this is a good, good, uh, good practice job to work on. So. We're gonna jump right into it, and and I'm, I gotta admit, part of the reason I'm doing this is I hear a comment a lot on my videos about not modeling precisely. Not that I'm modeling, modeling inaccurately, but I'm not taking precision size into account when I model, and that is 100% true. A lot of the models I do, um, I get them done fairly quickly. They're, they're you know digestible less than 10 minutes, and I don't spend a lot of time typing in exact dimensions. I'll just draw a rectangle and start modeling from there. Um, that's true, that's absolutely true. I'm guilty of that, I do that. This, in particular, is gonna be built exact. We're gonna model this to exact precision, um, starting right now-ish. So, well, let's do it. We're gonna hop in. So, I do have a PDF here. Um, I downloaded each of these pages. So like I said, there's four pages. The first page is some pictures of, thing, of the thing. The final, this is what we're looking for. Then I have two pages of, uh, I guess you'd call them, just the, the actual drawings of, I think there's like 46 pieces that we'll have to model to put this thing together. And then the final is kind of a more technical image of what this looks like assembled. And a section in there showing the inside of the pistons, that kind of stuff. So it's cool too because it, it's a bunch of parts you model and you get to put together. So it's, it's really cool, not just uh, modeling each of these pieces, which is good SketchUp practice, but then using edit tools to go put them back together afterwards. So I'm gonna hop in here and we're gonna take a look at making this. So a couple things right now as we're starting. Um, I honestly, I, I, don't, I couldn't find the website it came from but uh, I said, I think if you type JDW, here, let's, 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 we know how to do this. Ooh, I'm excited. You go to images. Um, Does images have PDFs on it? Or maybe a link to it, I guess, maybe? Yeah, maybe not. This kind of looks like one of them. Let me see. Let's see what happens. Randomly click on stuff on the internet. What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in hindsight, I probably should have saved. Oh, there's one for sure. This is definitely one of them. Um, model engine website. Model, excuse me, model engineering website. This is this was was the spot. Uh, the USS Monitor. So you can see, 
beautiful work, just awesome looking. I mean, and I kind of honestly, I I don't do a lot of metal machining or anything like that, but if I did, this is probably what I do because I just think this this stuff is so beautiful. Look at that little rendered uh, image, just awesome, just super cool. And he, there's a bunch up here. Some of them are are simpler than others. Um, Simple vertical steam engine. Actually, I, I'm not sure if I modeled this one. I don't think I did. But just super cool reference drawings to work from. So check that out, modelengineeringwebsite.com. So if you do end up reaching out, talking to this guy, give him a thumbs up, say, say thank you on my behalf. Um, all right, so we're going to hop in. Hey, Marconi, how's it going? Um, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to abuse a power that I have right now. Abuse it. Go ahead. And that is in the fact that I'm running on a Mac. So I'm going to actually come up here, file, import, and I'm going to directly from my desktop import a PDF file. I say that I'm abusing because this is not something you can do on a Windows machine. Uh, Why is that? Reasons. <laughs> Isn't it because of technical the reasons? Operating um, system limitations. Exactly. Like so we actually don't ship our own PDF reading and writing software with SketchUp. We leverage what's available on the website. Macintosh has an integ. Uh, Macintosh. Well, yeah, I guess it's right. Apple. Apple computers have an integrated. Uh, PDF reader and writer that we can leverage. Windows doesn't. Anytime you see it on Windows, it's from someone else. It's from uh, Adobe or one of the other PDF reading and writing softwares. We can't rely on any of those specific ones to be there, so unfortunately we don't natively out of the box support it. But there is an extension, and I was going to look this up, but like I said, I was running out of time this morning. There's an extension for uh, Windows, which I think is called PDF Reader, PDF Importer. Somebody out there know that off the top of the head. There's, a, there's an extension that runs on SketchUp Windows that will allow you to directly import a PDF file. And I believe it just imports and makes an image out of it or maybe lines. Um, can somebody help me out with that and tell me what, if you know what that is? Um, I'm going to go to Preferences real quick. I'm going to go to OpenGL and I'm going to use Use Maximum Texture Size. And what this is going to do when I hit Yes, watch the... Uh, this doesn't look bad. This is not a bad PDF, but it's definitely not sharp. If I hit yes right now, see how it just kind of gets a little bit crisper. Um, just a little bit easier to read. So when I did this last time, when I created this file, I'm not going to trace this by the way. I'm going to do all my input based on the dimensions that are in the drawing. And when I did this originally, I actually did it on two, I had two monitors going at one time. So on one monitor I had the PDF open, and on the other monitor I had SketchUp and just looked back and forth and drew it. That's hard to do in this case because I'm only presenting one monitor to you guys, so that's why I'm doing that import. Not a requirement for what I'm about to do. All right, with that, I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this my Steam Stream because I'm streaming the creation of this Steam device. I enjoyed that more than you guys did. I could tell already with just from the silence that I'm getting from the camera. <laughs> All right. The Steam stream? The Steam stream. I enjoyed it. I don't care. Anyhow. Is it a live Steam or is it a stream engine? Moving on. It could be both at <laughs> once. All, right. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna do here like I said, I am going to build this to millimeter accuracy, but I'm not going to work in millimeters. Millimeters are very small. Um, there's a lot of curves on here. There's a lot of uh, small geometry. And I'm concerned if I start modeling at millimeters that I'm actually going to run into the issue with the fact that uh, SketchUp does have a limitation to geometry it can create. It's very small. It's a fraction of an inch. Um, it can handle small geometry once it's created, but it has a hard time drawing geometry smaller than I think it's a thousandth or a ten thousandth of an inch, which we may, re may run into with this because we're going to be drawing some, uh, some very smooth arcs and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to Windows and Model Info, 
and I'm going to modify my units. Go to decimal, and rather than drawing in millimeters, I'm going to draw in meters. But I'm going to treat meters like they're millimeters. So one le uh, one fewer m to type. That's right. That's that's really so what it all comes down to. We're saving time here. So right here, this uh, this base, this piece number one is 117 millimeters. I'm going to just draw it as 117 right now, which is by default going to draw meters. Ooh, that's big. All right, I'm going to grab that line, scoot it up a little bit, grab this and scale that even larger. All right, so I'm going to draw this piece. So this is now <clears throat> what I just drew, 117 millimeters. And then when I'm done, I'll just scale that down by 0 0.001. 0 yeah, that's right. I think that's right. Zero, zero, 001. Um, and then what I'll end up with is my final model will be exactly precise to the drawings I'm working from. All right, I'm going to work my way up here. Um, so this is my piece. So I just drew the 117. That's the whole span of this side. And I'm going to work my way up this thing right here. So I'm going to come up. 12, we come this way, 4, up 26, back this way, 4, up 50, excuse me, 50.5. And I'm just right now realizing this is actually symmetrical. In fact, they have a nice dotted line right here showing that. Oh. So I will I take advantage of that. I thought that was where you use scissors. <laughs> That's where you crease it. Yeah. Just fold that brass right over. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to model half of this. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to double my work if I don't have to. All right. So there is half the shape minus this uh, circle right here, or this, this curve right here. You can see it has it called out as a 20 degree radius. So what I can do is, I can do this a couple different ways. Well, I'll actually do it a few different ways. One thing I can do is come in here with a line, come up this way 20, hit enter. I can grab a standard three-point arc. I forget the names of these different arcs. Two-point arc. I can come to that point I just created. I can drag out my, uh, my teal arc along the line until it turns magenta. Then I know that that's tangent to those two sides. So that's a full 20-degree uh, radius. If I double-click there, delete that. So that's one way to do it. We have a bunch of arcs, so I'll touch on some different ways to do it once we get into this a little more. That's half of the geometry here. Um, there is depth to it. You can see this does come up and it has like a little leg that comes down here. I'm going to finish up my geometry here before I push pull. I can create circles and push pull into a solid volume, but it's much easier to empty them out of the 2D geometry. That way when I pull it up, it'll just be uh, part of it. I don't have to go through and do a bunch of push pulls or anything like that. All right. so. For these right here, I have some reference lines. I'm going to do something that I almost never do. What? I, I'm growing. It's because of you guys. I'm growing. I'm doing things that I don't normally do. I'm going to put in some construction lines, some reference lines. So normally we talked about this. Um, we, a lot of, did I say degrees? I'm sorry, Chris Ryan saying that radii defined by degrees. I did. I, I may have said degrees. I meant 20 uh, meters, Radi millimeters. Radians. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing, right? Yeah. Isn't that how you'd measure radioactivity? I don't know. <laughs> Get um, out your Geiger counters, everybody. Right. It's time. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and my first line of screw holes is right here, 19.25 meters from the top. So I'm going to click right here on this line, pull this way, 19.25, enter. All right, next one is 10 down from there. So I'm going to click on this one, bring it down 10, enter. What do we got next? Is that an 18? Looks like an 18. Go down this way, 18. And then finally, 10. All right, so those are the lines, four lines where my screws will go. Now I need two lines this direction. This dimension's pulled off the end. So same thing, tape measure tool, grab this line, pull this way 16, enter, and then another 58. All right, here's one of the great 
reasons to use uh, a guideline like this as opposed to just drawing a line. I, and I admitted that. I, I draw a bunch of lines. I do that a lot. Um, but it's not the ideal way to do it in some situations. Probably a lot of situations. I don't know. But here's the reason. So this hole is two and a half. So that's a one and a half meter radius. So I'm going to come in here with my circle. Talk about circle just for a second. So the default circle is 24 sides. Um, this model is going to have a lot of circular pieces nesting inside one another. So I want to make sure that all of my uh, all of my circles have the same number of sides so I can nest everything together. So I need to decide right now up front how many sides that's going to be. I'm going to say that I'm going to go with, because some of these are kind of big, 24 may end up faceted, so I'm going to double that to 48. I'm going to put 48 sides on my circles. So I'm going to type 48, enter. And I'm going to come in here and draw my first circle right here. I remember it's a, a two and a half inch circle, so that means two and a half meter, millimeter circle. So I'm going to come in here and type 1.25 is my radius, and there's my circle. Now here's the cool part about using guides as opposed to lines. I can pick this circle right now, and I can choose move to move it from the middle point. I hit my option key and just drop that everywhere that I have one of those intersections. The reason this is cool is because if there was lines here, it would have broken my circle. So I would have multiple pieces to have to grab. So if this was just, if these were both lines, I'd actually have one, two, three, four pieces to grab to move to the next spot. Because they're just circles, they're not broken by anything real, I can grab them, same thing here, grab them, option, and drag them down to here. And I don't have to worry about healing these circles back up if I had broke them into quarters, I might want to use weld to put the circle back together afterwards. Um, at this point, everything's going to be nice and clean, no problems. I can come and get rid of my guides at this point. But even if you did weld, SketchUp wouldn't identify it as a circle, right? And then it wouldn't give you the center point? It, it would be. It, it is possible to, yeah, to break circles beyond repair. That is, that is possible. Sometimes you can weld them back together and everything's, everything's happy, but that's not an always thing. Not sure. I was also thinking one of my theories for why you were using guides, because there's got to be a reason, uh, was isn't there some way to like export um, true curves if you have like a, if it's a curve or a circle, like an arc or a circle in SketchUp, isn't there like some kind of export if you were truly like machining this or sending it to like a metallurgist or whoever would, I don't know who does that kind of stuff, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that another reason why you might keep it as like an actual circle or SketchUp circle or whatever? Yeah, that's, I mean, depending on how I'm exporting this, if I export it as a uh, DXF or something like that, then um, I can actually have it convert these segmented SketchUp curves into real curves. Um, but that only works, yeah, if you have, if they're, they're recognized as circles or arcs at the time of export. So yeah, that is that is an excellent point. It was not a reason I thought of, but yeah, let's say I thought of that. I'll, I'll take credit for <laughs> hey, that. We're a Absolutely. Team. I, I can <laughs> I uh I help out a little bit. You do. Let's see. I do. That one's that one's Robeson, all Robeson right there. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna grab this circle. Same thing, option copy. I just threw a couple of other guides in there while we were uh, talking. And you'll notice that when I copied that one over it deleted the, the material out of there. So the surface disappeared because the one I'm copying was cut all the way through. The first ones I copied were just a bunch of circles on the surface, so I had to go through real quick and delete those out. But uh, yeah, so if you're looking at saving a couple clicks, you can copy circles on surfaces and delete them first. All right, we're getting there. Um, other curves, oh, good call. Thank you, Aaron Powell, and you've got a great first name, my friend. We do have a couple of uh, radiuses, radii, radii, just radii, no plural. Um, this one, same thing, I come in here. Uh, so this is four. So what I would have to do is, in order to get, because the geometry, I'm not working off of a closed, well, there's a couple ways I could do this. I think I could do this, and then I'm going to put my arc. No, still not going to do that. 
look at some other options here. Three point arc? Nope, I still need the number then. That's not what I was thinking. That's not the one I was wanting to grab. I use the A shortcut key, and I've been using it since before there was multiple archetypes, so forgive me if I uh, stumble here a little bit. Um, no, we're just gonna go with the standard, standard arc arc. And in order to do this, I do have to have a snap point here four meters up. So I can do a couple things. I can click right here, go this direction for arc, click here, double click to close. That's one option. Another thing, and I do this a lot because I'm lazy. No, because I like to optimize my workflow is rather than hopping over the keyboard to type a dimension, I'll take an existing line that I already know and do something like this where I can click, swing it around there, because what that does is that gives me that same snap point right there. So then I can just hit arc and bring it right there, double click. And for so. these, you're using the, the default arc. Just the I know default you, arc, yeah. I know you changed the, the circle segment number, but the default arc for the outside is gonna work I out okay? Right, so it's 12, which is one quarter for these. So for a quarter arc, a quarter turn, 12 sides is the same as a 48 for a full circle. Ah. Yes. Yes, Very it good. is. Very good. All right. Now, real quick, side view of this thing, 13 meters tall. And then right here at, where is this? Oh, right here. 10 meters in, it pushes up another five. So I'm gonna come underneath it like this, come over 10. that one screw hole is actually in the raised section. Yep, and then this goes up five. So the other thing I may wanna do before I copy it over, I'm gonna do a couple things. One, I'm gonna delete this out of here. I'm gonna grab my eraser and hold on the modifier key, Alt, or I believe it's Control on Windows. Smooth these pieces out now, so I don't have to do it twice later. Then I'm gonna triple click, use Move with the Option key, Copy it over, and then just scale about the middle to negative one. Uh, the arcs don't start at the bottom was a comment you got there. How do you oh, feel really? about that? Well, uh, they should because they are a four meter radius on a four meter offset. Oh. I did the same thing when I first looked at this drawing. This is a dimension line. The end of the piece is actually right here. See that? Come out like that. So you can kind of see it right here too. See the arcs right there? I did that same thing when I started. When I first did this, um, apparently I said something that sounds like, hey Siri, because my phone just, <laughs> oh, I did it again. <laughs> um, yeah, I did the same thing, because I thought, I'm like, I thought this was a little lip but that's actually the dimension. So this is right where the arc starts. It goes up to the edge. All right, um, just tell it to meld those pieces together and I can delete these extra lines and piece number one is done. Nice, ship it, send it to the metallurgist. That's right, <laughs> the, the alchemist. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna take that piece and I'm gonna make it a component. I'm gonna call it Component number one, because on my plan, it actually has the label of zero one. So I'm gonna call it number one, and I'm gonna hit create. Um, I'm gonna take a little shortcut on, no, no need to do, Marvin. I Like I said, I made the same mistake. I thought the same thing. Great minds think alike. So I is mine all, sometimes. Huh? I knew it all along. Yeah, Matt, Matt, would, Matt would probably be done by now. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna come in here to layers, because I'm gonna, shortcut something. So in here we have about five different materials, I think. So I'm gonna make a layer for each material. So I'm gonna make one called brass. I'm gonna make another one called bronze. I'm gonna make one called steel. I think I have one that is Teflon. I think those are them. I may have a, I may have a copper too. I'll, I'll just make a copper just because, just because I can. can. Do whatever I want. I'm the chief of police. All right, so now I'm gonna come into these layers and change the color 
to whatever that layer is. So this is the brass color. So I'm gonna get a nice, nice warm yellowy color. That's good, that's gonna be my brass color. Okay, bronze, same thing. I'm gonna come in here and get a bronzy color, kind of a light brownish. All right, copper, we're gonna go for more of a... Uh, I feel like all these are very similar. A little more reddish. Well, it is a steam engine. I mean, they do kind of end up being pretty similar. I may exaggerate the red a little bit. Copper's gonna be a little more, that's, wow, that's like the same color, <laughs> almost exactly. A little more red, a little, even more red. Yeah, all right, that'll work. Steel, I'm just gonna go straight white-ish. Just a touch of gray. Nice, like the hair and, uh, product. Teflon, we'll, we'll make this, we'll go the other side. We'll go like with a light, light bluish for our Teflon. All right, there we go. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually change my uh, my default layer color. You don't like the salmon? I, it's the de it's the one that shows up the most often, and it's just, ugh, it's just, it's just not good. I'm gonna go green because that way I know if something shows up as green, I know it shouldn't be there. All right, so th having green done all of that, should be there. That's oh, green dang it. So if any surfaces show up, they should be there. <laughs> okay. Whew. Tough crowd. <laughs> I'm gonna turn on color by layer right now. And what that's gonna do is that's just going to automatically put the colors onto those members on my screen. The actual colors would all still be white. So if I wanted to apply uh, like a reflective material that I wanna render with later, I can still do that. I don't have to worry about filling each one with the colors now. Now I can just focus on modeling. A little bit of a shortcut. But what that does mean is as I create each one, I just need to go tell it what material is this, this is brass, and there we go. All right, now moving on. Right here, we got ourselves an interesting looking piece. I'm gonna just start modeling it right here next to these, uh, next to this plan. So I'm gonna model this in this view right here. I'm gonna come up seven, I'm gonna come over seven. I'm gonna do math because now I gotta go up 15 from the bottom. So I know that is eight, 25, Ugh, why do they do math to me? So that's me 17. And then I'm gonna, because, no, I just go across 30. I can do basic, basic math. <laughs> oh, it's, it's basic hard. Basic math? Basic mathing. 18, and then I believe this is all symmetrical. Yeah, this is, I can use reference here. Come across. This thing looks like a clock you would keep on your mantle. It you know. does, it's a, it's a fancy piece. All right, so there's my initial shape right here. And then right here, I have a 10, uh, a radius of 10, like an arc that goes in and then separate from that, a circle on the inside. So I'm gonna grab my circle. I'm gonna stick with 48 and draw this one out 10 to get that outside piece. And now I need to put this inside radius, but guess what? I don't have a dimension that I see anywhere on this. Um, I believe, I'm fairly certain that this bronze piece actually fits right inside this piece. Um, let me take a peek right quick. Um, okay. Why didn't he flip along axis instead of scaling negative one? Certainly could have. Um, I think there, I don't know if there are, are there differences that, not in this case that would matter, but. Um, Absolutely could have, probably should have. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> Aaron prefers the scaling negative one just in case he might get the wrong axis. I'm um, just. But he's been bad, getting better. I'm working on it, guys. Um, are we going to render this later? I don't know. What's the, uh, what's the end product why? for this model? Hey, it could always happen. Um, I'm not a huge fan of sitting and watching things render because it's boring, but uh, maybe we'll get this done. Maybe what I'll shoot for is once I get it done, maybe I'll put materials on and do a render overnight or something, a high quality render and throw it up on our, uh, on the forum or something like that, but that'd be pretty cool. No, the green piece is not symmetrical. You're right, look at this, 25 and 18. I almost copied it and it's not. It's actually longer on one side than the other. And I did find out 
this uh, thing, this round thing, fits inside this hole. If I look at the dimension on this, it says it's 12 all the way across. So I'm going to draw a circle right here with a radius of 6. And that gets the initial part of my model done of this piece. So I'm going to pull this out. This is the top view. Going to get rid of that. Going to pull this up 8. And then you'll notice it steps out here. Oh, I got to change my default color. <laughs> it's the same color <laughs> as the axes. <laughs> it disappears. <laughs> All right, so can't use red, can't use blue, can't lose, use magenta. I guess I'll have to go with a teal. Isn't that color. what That's like close and to the Teflon. And then Teflon will have to get moved to that sea foam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm back in. I'm back in. All right. This little piece steps out an additional, additional two meters. So that is almost my, oops, I did not put my arcs in here. Um, so I need to do that. I don't see any place it's called out. Dealer's choice. Um, I'm gonna say they look like Uh, what's half this? This is three and a half. They look like three and a half arcs. So this page has all the information for this, or for these pieces, I guess. I was just wondering if they might have it on a different page, but. Yeah, this is the, I downloaded all the PDFs associated with this particular engine, so. Gotcha. So throw those arcs in here real quick on this side. And here, I'll just do this. I'll grab this one, copy it, drop it right there. Smarter, not harder. Boom. And I got a little back face to clean up there. Oop, missed a line. All right, that looks pretty close. Um, I didn't do the thing that I was talking about where you said you go put circles in the flat. I got excited to extrude it apparently. Um, <laughs> but I do have one, two, three, four, five more circles to drill into this thing. I'm going to start with a, a guideline right here. And this one is over 32. So I'm going to come over 32. I'm going to bring this up this way. And then I'm going to bring it up this way. And on this side, it's over 26. 26 meters over, bring it up here, bring it up here. And what we have here, we actually have two circles going through each other. Um, right here, going into the face, I have a three millimeter hole, and then the bottom I have what I believe in the rest of them are labeled as two and a half millimeter holes, and the holes actually cross through each other. This is pretty fun, this is kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my three millimeter holes in first. They are seven inches up. So actually I'm gonna do this. Uh, apparently those are taking on the color <laughs> of, the of the material that I'm pulling there. There we go. Uh, that's, that could have, that was different. Um, I'm going to pull this up. This is up seven meters. So I'm going to click this way, draw it, drag it seven. And then I can put my circle in here. One, 1. 1.5. And I'm going to push that through all the way to the bottom. And then grab that, all the geometry of that circle, grab it by this uh, guide intersection, option click and drag it over to where it intersects, right there. It didn't, it didn't intersect completely, so I just grab that geometry, right click. Actually, I don't, I don't want. I'm gonna get rid of my guides, so I'm gonna delete guides real quick, and then intersect bases with selection, and that'll break that. So if you ever copy geometry one spot to another, doesn't intersect, just grab everything associated with it and, and make it force it to intersect. All right, that's that piece. Now I have 
the middle of these, I have another circle, which is a smaller circle. Uh, it's actually two and a half rather than three, so I'm gonna put 1.25 for my radius. And I copy that. Um, well, I guess I'm gonna have to clean that up twice. All right, and these go up into the piece, 10 millimeters, so I'm gonna click here drag it up like this and just type in 10, enter, and then I can double click on the second one. All right, so let's look what that did. So if I turn on X-ray, I have two circles crossing through each other. This is actually a common detail. This little geometry that just happened here happens all over these, these bigger pieces. Once they're in here and they cross over each other, they're just two tubes like literally lapping through each other. So that's not gonna work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the inside of both like that, right click and hit intersect faces with selection. And there it goes. The mouse is, is uh, freaking out. So now I can delete this little piece here, this chunk of cylinder, chunk of cylinder. And then what I got is those two cylinders lapping through each other. Cool. So I'm not sure exactly what the geometry is that, that or how that all goes together. It's two screws, one holds another, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, all right, so we'll get rid of that. Boom, and boom, and boom. All right. Um, since most of the components are gonna be solids, maybe you can use solid tools and solid inspector to make sure that the blocks are solid. You know, and actually I could have done what I just did with solid inspector or solid tools by creating cylinders and subtracting from as opposed to intersecting. That would have worked as well. But yes, excellent idea. We should do that. All right. Up here on the top, I have a two meter hole dropping straight down through this geometry, some kind of a set screw or something. Um, rather than draw a guideline, I'm just going to go up and turn on my hidden geometry and I'm going to take this line right here, which is the top of the, the circle, I think. Yeah, that. I'm going to actually come down that, not clicking, just reference down to the middle of that line and I'm going to pull a line away. And now I'm going to draw a circle from that point, I'm gonna to snap to the green axis so it's up perpendicular. The problem, so there's a couple problems with trying to draw right here, is one is it's gonna to try to snap either one way or the other on the circle. The other thing that will happen is if I do get it drawn correctly, watch what happens. This geometry, that line breaks it into two circles, so immediately breaks. That's why I have this line floating out here. Click right here, one meter, gives me a two, mil, two millimeter meter I'm just going to start saying numbers and not increments. It gives me a two circle. <laughs> a two tube? <laughs> a two tube. <laughs> um, and uh, then I can do the same thing. Or I can grab this, 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 right click, intersect faces with selection, and now I can delete this extra geometry. There we go. Now, all looks good right now, but I wanna point something out. This goes back to the solid thing. Say I, I, I did wanna take this and maybe 3D print it or something. Um, I'm gonna have an issue with this piece and that issue can be seen if I go to monochrome. Monochrome is an awesome view because it gets rid of all the colors, textures, and just lets you see the geometry. But I can see right here that that was actually the inside rather than the outside. Reverse, reverse. So, yes, exactly. Flip that around. There we go. All right, with that, we have uh, completed another piece, which I believe this one is a number two. Well, do easy joke. So I'm gonna create that. I'm gonna make a copy of it because number three is the same, but it's mirrored. So I can grab this one. If I just mirror it right now, I'm mirroring the container that holds the geometry. So the inside is still exactly the same. I want a whole new piece. So there's a couple things I could do. One is I could explode it. I could just say explode, 
then mirror the geometry, then right click and make a new component. Or I can right now with it selected, click make unique. Make unique just makes it its own brand new component. And now with this selected, in order to flip it, I still have to change what's inside the container, not just flip the container. So if I double click, I can select all, right clip, flip along, green direction, there we go. So now I have, this is number two, see right here, component number two, right here, component number three, just like in the drawing. I'm gonna take both of these and make sure that we assign them now to the brass layer. People are saying uh, the side of the extruded part seems to be beveled. It, it does, I can see, you can see right here. So, I wanna do that. I'm gonna leave that off to later because even though I'll use an extension for it, it's a time consuming process to go through and pick lines and that kind of thing. So I wanna leave that off. Um, depending on what you're gonna do with it too, the other th reason I didn't get into it is, depending on what I wanna do with this, this may be a spot where it's, it's good enough to soften these particular specific edges. So this may actually be good enough for what I'm doing. I don't know, it depends. I think what I would probably do is go back with round corner or Fredo corner and, and round those off. But like I said, I'm making components of them. We can come back and edit the geometry later. Right now, I wanna go get the main geometry in and then come back in detail if we have time. Um, we're already almost an hour into this. I know time flies when you're sketching up, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to take too long <laughs> on, on these first couple pieces. So we can't come back and do that. But you can see, like a lot of these big pieces have have that kind of detail, and and we'll come back, like I said, later on and and clean those up if we have a chance. Good catch, though. All right, I'm gonna grab it by. I'm gonna turn on X-ray. I'm gonna grab this by the center of the screw hole. And again, that's like Matt was pointing out, it's important that we uh, make sure we keep that geometry hole so I can reference that, that center of hole. And same thing here, this is gonna line up here. I want the center of the hole, so I'm just gonna just hover over the edge of the hole for a second, and then it'll let me snap right to the middle. And I'm just gonna start putting this together as we go. Um, there we go. So as these pieces get finished, I'll be able to see the, the steam engine come together. So what I'm looking at right now is this kind of thing right here. Or well, I guess we can look at the next first. So yeah, so I just put these two pieces on here. Um, and we're gonna keep, keep walking along there, keep building them up. We're just gonna keep going down the list. So piece number four is this little bronze, what is that, a gusset or a, it's not a bearing because it not doesn't have balls in it. Um, it's got no balls. So I don't know what that is called. Um, there's I can think of a couple ways to do this. Way number one would be circles. So if I was to come in here, draw my six. Oh, here's a point. As I draw these, again, I was talking about circles nesting inside of circles. This one is going to sit right inside this piece right here. I wanna make sure that my axes are always the same. So I'm gonna always draw my axes along the red or green line. So in this case, I'm gonna pull along the red line, I'm gonna pull it out six and hit enter. That gets me this outside piece, so this piece right here. That's gonna get pulled up five. Actually, before I do that, I'll put another circle on here. That is the inside geometry here of eight, so I'm gonna put four, which is half of that and delete that because there's no point in holding on to that. Pull this up five, draw another circle now from here out along the red axis, 15, so that's 7.5. Take that up two with a radius of one. So I'm gonna go up one, pull this up, whoops. Pull this up one, two, and now um, because it has this one <laughs> millimeter radius on it, so what I can do then is go like this, 
This is kind of the best of both worlds. The other way I was thinking of doing it is drawing the profile of it and just extruding it or following me around a circle. Um, this kind of gives you both. So we drew that base part, the top hat looking part. And now I can come up one, I can come across here. This is 3.5, so I'm going to come across 2.5. And then from there, I can draw an arc from here down to here. I'm going to grab this circle. Follow me. There we go. And one of the issues with follow me, though, is it is easy to break geometry. So that's what happened there. I triple click and just uh, soften, smooth that whole thing. All right. So there's my thing. It doesn't even say what does it call it. Let's see. What does it say that is? Crankshaft bearing. It is a bearing. Mm. Nailed it. All right. So I'm gonna. I think I have interior interior geometry there. Oops. Make a group for it. Make component first. Make component. Component four. Check that for solid. I think. Oh, a straight edge. Not as bad as I thought. That is made of bronze. So I'm gonna assign it to the bronze layer, which will turn it a nice brownish color. And then uh, I'll use move. When you use move on a, whoops. I do that a lot. After you assign a layer, click outside of it. Once you start hitting shortcut keys, you're typing in a new name of a layer. So I just created an MM layer, which I don't know. I thought we were working in meters, not millimeters. Why'd you do that? <laughs> All right, we'll flip that vertical. And now, like I say, now we need to align this with the circle I have up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it by a edge piece. It doesn't matter which piece I pick, because when I come up here, I'm gonna be able to align it to the right side, correct side of the circle. There we go, so that looks good there. I'm gonna take it and slide it out, just along the green axis, so I'm moving vertically, or horizontally, and then I can slide it right back in to the surface. Awesome. Um, I believe there's a total of eight of these. So there's one on either side of each of these. And then this whole array that we're building right now is actually gonna get copied and moved over. So that's the reason I didn't put four of these on here is because this whole thing, it's a, called a twin steam engine. So that whole chunk uh, duplicates. All right, so I'm gonna take this piece and I'm going to rotate, lock to the vertical plane and down from above. Here's what I'll do here. I'll put a line just as a reference line to use. That way I can lock to the vertical plane, grab this line, option to copy, flip it around 180 degrees. There we go. I don't need this line. Now I can copy that. Um, let's see, I gotta pick a point that's the same on both of these. So I'm just gonna use the top of this point. So I'm gonna grab both components, move it from here, option, slide straight over to here. All right, there's our bearings. Control S, because I learned. All nice. right, next one's fairly simple. Um, it's a block. <laughs> it's literally a rectangle. Easy. So, uh, Oh yeah, easy, except there's math involved. So I come up 15. Then I have to go over six plus 18 plus six. That's, I'll leave that up to you. That's 30. 12 plus 18, 30. You guys buy that? 30 sounds right, right? 30, maybe 30? Sure. Uh, Manny says, finally get to watch one of these live. Thanks for watching, Manny. Appreciate you being here. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Um, mmm, steamy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then it looks like we had a suggestion for um, an artist. Let's get some kind of science fiction type stuff. Nice. Yeah, we'll check it out. Is it steamy? Is that also steamy? Um, there could be steam involved. I did. I definitely do not know how to pronounce the person's name. I'm not quite sure how I set my line color to uh, be this teal. A 
or my guide color, I should say. Does it just go by the layer color? Or no, it mm. wouldn't because... I'm not sure how I did this. This is, uh, does anybody know what I did? <laughs> Who was paying attention to me? <laughs> I have these teal guides now. I'm not sure what I did. Hmm. Whose turn was it to watch me? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna draw a line in six on either side. And I'll put my first circle, just like I did before. Uh, this is a two and a half, so I'm gonna go 1.25, grab it. Move it, option, copy to here, and then bring that up, S 10. Actually, that might be exactly the same as the last one. I may have been able to actually just copy this out. I don't know if the other one came in six, though. No, so it was a little bit different geometry, but uh, not too far off. Um, and actually, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking of different ways to do some of this stuff. I could have built this in half as well, but anyhow, um, seven millimeters up, seven, circle. This one is the three millimeters, so 1.5, and then that pushes in also 10. Um, yeah, it looks like people said it's, uh, it goes by the layer color when you uh, do color by layer, the guides. Cool. Um, what do you think about the SketchUp versus Blender debate? I'd probably say that we're partial to SketchUp. <laughs> That's what I would probably say. I would guess, generally speaking, in the office, people lean towards Blender. But I would also at the same time say... <laughs> towards Blender? <laughs> or lean towards SketchUp. Can't talk and model. Um, I would say that one of the big things, SketchUp versus Blender, um, I don't think anybody here has any an animosity or negativity towards Blender. It's another tool that people who are 3D modeling get to use. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we do a lot of interaction with other tools, and from where we're at, it's just it's another tool that's out there. So, Yeah, if it works for you, then... Great. Yeah. Now some people want to fight. It's like saying, what's better, Mac or Windows? Android or Apple? Tastes great, less filling. If you want to have a passionate attitude and get upset about it, that's cool, but we don't really buy into that. Uh, are you sure you made your radius right? Uh, Bruce following along said half of 1.5 is 1. is 1.25. Let's check. Your radius might be wrong. These ones oops, covered up. These ones are 2.5. These ones should be 3. 3. Oh. So yeah, these ones at the bottom are called out as 2.5. And, and these ones on the side are 3. Cool. I won't claim that I'm always right, so I appreciate a <laughs> double check on that one. All right, so I'm going to make this a new component. I know I'm going fast, but we have 40 more components to make. So some of these get, get kind of easy. Some of these are just extruded tubes and that kind of stuff. So it'll get easier, but uh, I do want to just keep keep moving. So uh, Matt's going to make sure I don't fall behind. Yeah, I'm very strict on the time limit. And, and that. All right, so this is going to go on to the... get home to the uh, wife and kids. Just kidding, I don't have a wife and kids. But I got to get home. It's Friday right. afternoon. Do you think I want to be in the office? Are you kidding? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. Yeah, this uh, is a, this is, I feel pretty lucky. We're lucky that this is how we get to spend part of our day on a Friday. That's that's pretty sweet. We like hanging out with you guys. Yeah, definitely. Very fun. Um, let's see. Ashish, keep doing such projects. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And Aaron will keep doing it, and I'll keep uh, annoying him <laughs> as we go along. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Um, Mike, I love that you're using guides in this episode. Yeah, turn over a new leaf. You got the flip along under your belt. Now you're moving on. You're always Save always improving. flip along guides. Yeah, it's you guys. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a uh, it's something. I'm really, really, I'm coming along. I'm really, I'm really maturing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll keep saying it. Nobody else says that, but I'll say that. I'm pretty sure I put that in the right spot. I agree with you on that. Nice. Um, got a suggestion for 
uh, doing stage design, trusses, lights, and all that stuff. Yeah, we'll cool. put in the suggestion box and perhaps uh, add it to the list. Fire it up, yeah. Um, all right. Are there threads in there? I think these are. <laughs> I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm probably not going to do threads. <laughs> um, threads are time. threads are interesting because we we could talk. Let's talk threads. Um, the thing about threads is this. They're obviously very important in the real world, but the question really comes down to, do you need them when you're not in the real world? And what I mean by that is, obviously if I was gonna go machine this, it would be very important for me to have threads to make things screw together. In a 3D model, the question is, do I have to go in and put that in there? The issue with threads immediately is that it becomes very heavy very quickly and that can cause uh, issues. Make your model super heavy, hard to work with. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, threads, threads add a very cool touch and a look to your model, but uh, you really need to be conscious of, of the, it's, it's a cost benefit analysis, I guess. Mm -hmm. Somebody somewhere would say. When I first saw this uh, model, the steam engine model, I thought of uh, Dave R immediately. He always does like, um, similar type things, and he has threads on his sometimes, and yep. knurling and all that, and it uh, looks beautiful and wonderful. Yeah, he uh, he has some great look. He just I don't I don't know if he just he may have finished it. He modeled a uh, a lathe with everything. I mean, it was every piece of it, and it was it was a super cool. He actually sent me the this, like a hand drawing. He sent kind of challenged me. Said here. T take a crack at this one, oh, nice. <laughs> which was cool. I, I respect that. I got, I got no problem with that. that was, it was pretty cool, though. All right. I'm going to come across here. Ten. Um, so I'm drawing half of this shape right here. At this point, we're just kind of doing the same thing we've been doing. Ooh, it's got big, big circles on it. Five. All right. And then that's half of that. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to option, whoops, click and option flip that, get rid of the lines in the middle. One circle left right up the middle. 12 meters up is a circle that is three. Uh, been a subscriber since the start of the channel, rediscovered it with the pirate ship stream. All right. Um, just love watching, greetings from Germany. Hey, yeah. thanks. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate uh, having you on here. Every week we'll be live streaming. Unless we're not. Unless we're not. All right, check this out. I'm, I'm studying right now. I'm fairly certain this detail matches this detail. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on this guy right here, turn on x-ray, I'm going to grab all that geometry, control C, and back out, and uh, I'll, I'll flip this upwards so we're working on the same direction. Heck, I'll even go so far as to turn it facing the same direction. Now we're absolutely square. And I'm going to hit control V. Oh, that laid it flat. <laughs> Figures. It just should have stayed where I was. Had to get fancy there. All right, so I'm gonna turn this. I intentionally grabbed this little line when I selected. That was this 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 corner piece right here, because these material pieces are the same thickness too. Uh, they're both eight eight millimeters. So I was thought that would be a great way to place that. Is to grab it right now, by the end of that line, and put it right there. Save myself some time. All right, if I draw a line right down the middle, because this is centered in that geometry right now without deselecting at all. Cool thing, a lot of people, as soon as they move something, they'll hit escape or hit the escape bar and click off the side to deselect it. A lot of times you wanna manipulate that geometry after you manipulate it once. So having it already be selected, I can click here, option, copy it right over. There we go. 
Um, Twitch stream seems to be down. Have you tried refreshing it? It looks okay from my end, but uh, yeah, try refreshing the stream perhaps. I'm not sure. Oops. Um, awesome. What is the most challenging project you've modeled? Hmm. Um, on here, I gotta say most of these things that I hop into, I don't really know how I'm going to do them when I start. So uh, everything is a cop out, but, uh, I'm trying to think if I've had any particular model I've done that has been super difficult. I really like spending time modeling, so, oh no. I just realized I put these in sideways. So you gotta go this way instead of this way. Undo, 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 undo. All right. I'll get back to that question in one moment. Apparently, this is the answer. Um, I think uh, anything for me, uh, any place that I have to go back and input crazy amounts of detail, it can, it can bog me down. Um, I like going and designing and making things more than I like, you know, like that first 50% as opposed to the, uh, like I'll go build a house, model the inside outside, that's fine. But as soon as I got to get into like interior design or, you know, putting cabinets in that kind of stuff, that just, that's not my deal. That's just not, unfortunately, <laughs> what I enjoy doing. So, um, so I have had to do that. So that, that probably, it's probably in the, up there with the, my least favorite models to do. Um, oops, dang it, I did it again. Yeah, it happens. I'm going to do it again too, just so you guys know. Yeah, keep, uh, keep the streak going. Um, for models with more precise dimensions, I would recommend using Curic length snapping for easier work. Have you ever used that or heard of it? I haven't used that one in particular, but I will say I will give big props to uh, Curic. I think that some awesome, awesome tools that, that uh, are being created there. And uh, yeah, I believe, I haven't used it, but I have faith that it is probably a good extension knowing uh, the track record of Curic extensions. Nice. Um, have you ever 3D printed your models? Once or 50 times. Yep. <laughs> I actually had a 3D printer at home for a long time. Um, I, I am an enthusiast for 3D printing. I think it's a great technology. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I do like, I like 3D printing a lot. And the Iron Man mask that you modeled the other mm -hmm. week, you uh, were working on printing. Yeah. Are you printing the whole thing? I know you had like no, the faceplate thing, and that took yeah. like 35 hours or something. But. Yeah. I, I uh, Yeah, that was, that was good for me. That was <laughs> a day and a half of printing. I know some people do those massive monster prints all the time. Um, I don't know if that's an ADD thing for me or what, but, uh, yeah, I don't do a whole lot of huge, long prints. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do, I do like to print stuff whenever I can. And it's, it's also a workflow thing for me because I do really try as much as possible to keep things solid. So when I go in and I start modeling, modeling as a solid is, is an important thing for me, um, which I think kind of comes back to, uh, doing 3d printing. Uh, James Neely 3D. I've uh, been watching uh, VODs and lurking since you were doing the Millennium Falcon. Thank you for these streams. Thank you for your thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, did you do a SketchUp model of your tattoo before getting it done? <laughs> no, I left that to an artist who specializes in the medium. <laughs> yeah, that's I fear if I walked in with uh, the viewer on my phone and said, I want this, 
you probably would have uh, laughed or something. It probably would not have gone anywhere very productive. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it best to build all geometry on layer zero and then only have the component on a separate layer or would you build geometry on a specific layer? Yes. All geometry should go on layer zero. Um, you can actually run into issues eventually with uh, putting it anywhere else. So, Because layers don't control whether or not geometry sticks together. Right. Um, that's what groups and components do. So if you accidentally had raw geometry on two different layers and you hide one layer and then don't realize then that um, geometry sticking together is one of the things that makes SketchUp sort of unique and... Um, you know, and shoot yourself in the and, foot there, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, always draw raw geometry on layer zero, and then um, group and component, and then throw it on layers from there for visibility. Uh, what happened to the Iron Man mask? Yeah, we start. He started printing it, and uh, I think the final model is really cool. And the actual faceplate print that you did was really. It sweet. was, and I have to. I have to. Some comments came in after the fact. And I got to agree. I mean, it, it, when I step back and look at Iron Man mask, it's very flat in the front. Mine has like this kind of creases, which I just thought were awesome. But I look at it and it <laughs> looks a little more Predator than Iron Man. Um, so it's, it's my Iron Me mask, I guess, instead of real true Iron Man. So I, gotta, <laughs> I, gotta, I do have to acknowledge a couple people called me out on that. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not perfectly what Robert Downey Jr. wore. But uh, it does still... I'm, I'm, I haven't basically haven't done anything with it since last week, so I didn't didn't bring it in. It's uh, still printed, primed, and slightly sanded, nice. just a touch. It's a, a kiss of sanding. And I thought that one was fun because you were sculpting and kind of making it your own a little bit. This, on the other hand, is definitely very right. exact this... and machined, and you're typing in dimensions. And exactly. Stuff. So we're we're working off of precision versus, like I like to call it sculpting. You know, we're not. We're not uh, doing exact precision in a lot of the models we do because we're just kind of creating something. Um, so this is this is pretty pretty cool to actually change it up and for me to like I like doing this kind of stuff. I think this is pretty this is pretty cool. All right, so I'm doing this kind of weird. It looks like the inside of a doorknob, a little little. Uh, brownish part that the something spins inside of there's a lock thing I don't know yeah so I it's it's primarily this tube that I've already drawn I don't actually need these to be separate and what I want to do it's got these cutouts right here you can see it cuts into it um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out here on the side I'm looking at it like this and I'm gonna draw this shape so it's down 25 and it's gonna come over some amount this part's not this is not a critical dimension that I just did there. These circles look like they are for a radius of four. Um, so I'm gonna come over here. Let's put another arc in here. And then let's take this one and because I clicked away. If I hadn't clicked away, I could have just double clicked on the other corner, but clicked out. All right, so that is my cutter, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Get rid of these extra lines by either deleting or smoothing. And I'm doing that beforehand on purpose because if there's a line segment a break in my cutter when I go cut into the other geometry because I'm going to use solid tools it's going to show that line there so by putting it smooth like this hopefully my cut is nice and smooth I say hopefully because that generally works but it's not 100% Ooh, uh, you had a question about your uh, key logger thing or the thing that shows your oh I didn't turn shortcuts. it on you're right good catch good catch told you I, I rolled in here like <laughs> <laughs> Literally ran into the room, start broadcasting, and uh, I was not 100%. I wasn't, wasn't ready with everything. Yeah. Key caster. Nice. Yeah, good catch, Manny. Thank you, Manny. Um, Nicholas, looking forward to these awesome Friday streaming sessions every day go. of the week. Ooh. Greetings from Germany. Hi. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. 
Enjoy. Um, how did you get the four holes that quick? I think you just drew one and then rotated around, right? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm balancing uh, telling you everything I'm doing with other conversations. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. And some, some stuff is, yeah, is coming out. Um, yeah, I, I did a, a radial array. So I copied one, used rotate to move it once, and then just hit X3. Um, let's see. I don't forget to save. Okay. <laughs> and uh, does intersect only work with raw geometry, or can you intersect two different groups? Um, intersect, you can intersect, you have to intersect with, well, yes, is the answer to that question. You can do it both. You can do it either way. You have to, well, here, let me, I can give you an example. Um, let me do this real quick. Let me make this into a group, because it's, it's a, it's a cutting piece. It's not an actual component. Um, I'm going to grab this, make it a group, and I'm going to move this in. So I'm going to grab this in this point. I want to continue along the green axes until I hit the face. Shift. Oop. I thought that was lined up. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to move it this direction direction until I come up to the center. There we go. All right, so that's where it's supposed to intersect. Now, if I, I'm gonna come in here and delete this line because I don't need it there. If I was to select this group, right click and say intersect face with model, I would get some lines. If I slide this over, you notice geometry's fine. If I slide this over, you notice geometry's fine. But this right here has been created. That's what happens when you intersect groups, is they actually create the line where the intersection will happen but they don't actually go anywhere. You can do something with this. I could take this, cut it, paste it into the group to cut into that, um, but it won't actually go through and modify any of the geometry because the container's kind of protecting it. All right, I'm gonna grab this piece now. And I'm gonna make a copy, option, click around this side. All right, so now I have group, group, group. I'm gonna go into uh, my tool palettes and turn on solid tools. And I'm going to say subtract this one from this one. Hmm, seems like that should have gone in a little further. Didn't get through the inner wall. Did I make it the wrong? I may have made, it, made something the wrong size. Let's see. Well, here, I'm going to undo first. Go straight across here. This is 16. That's the inner circle right there. Um, I'm assuming I didn't actually put that in far enough. Two millimeters instead of four millimeters. So I drew my arcs wrong, that's the problem. All right, so I'm gonna take it right now. I'm gonna put it where it's supposed to be first. It's supposed to be in two more millimeters. So I'm gonna type two, same thing here. Let's squish that in two millimeters. And I'm gonna come in here, and this is at two. It's supposed to be four. So I'm gonna come over two more millimeters, draw an arc. There we go. As soon as it's visible, <laughs> teal on teal. Man, I did <laughs> not do a good job selecting colors. Um, let's do that again. So arc from here to here. I'm gonna double click, and I'm just moving my mouse on here and double click. See if that works? No, it doesn't work. If that was a square corner, it would have automatically set that for me. But what I can do is inference, come to this point, drop straight down to here, click. Ah, but that's not gonna work because it's not gonna give me that line. Two, arc. Now I'm just gonna push this all the way through. Double click here. And again, like I was saying before, this is repetitive training. Help you guys remember, did it on purpose, totally on purpose. There we go. And now I'll just, simplest way to do this now is to just to, to recopy that over as opposed to editing both. Oops, didn't grab it. 
Um, is there an extension that warns of solid overlap uh, or interference in the model? So if one solid is in the same plane or the same space as another, that it gives you like a clash detection or something like that? Um, nothing simple that I know of. Um, and a lot of people who use it professionally use big software. <laughs> um, so I don't know of anything like a, a tool that runs inside other than, yeah, I mean, kind of solid and specker. That doesn't really, that's not really how it works. So nothing I think of off the top of my head. Um, it sounds like it would be a pretty sweet uh, tool to use or, or extension to create. The limitation, the only limitation I can think of is you'd have to always model solids. So I think that would be a pretty cool extension to make, but it would require solid modeling, but it's, it, it seems like it's possible. Nice. All right, I have some sort of a set screw in here, so I'm just drawing a couple lines to reference where it is. It's over 25. I'm just gonna start dropping a line down and then put a circle, doesn't have a size. I'm gonna say if I don't know better, I'm just gonna make it a two and a half meter circle. So 1.25, and then I'll push that down through, get rid of all this, make group, and then again, right now I can just subtract it from this space, this piece. All right, I'm gonna check it in monochrome, make sure my insides are where they need to be. Beauty. And right now it's a group. Anytime you use solid tools, even if you're starting with a component, what it creates in the end is a group. So you could have a component and a component, subtract one from the other, and it will result in a group. There's actually an extension from Eneroth, I don't know if Eneroth's on right now, that recreates a component when you do that, but the native solid tools will always create a group. That's why I didn't bother making a component to begin with. I left it as a group because now that I'm done, I got my geometry finished, I can right click and say make it a component and now I'll call it, see it's calling it difference because that's what it sees it as is a, a result of a solid tool uh, creation. But I'm going to call it component number seven. And I'm going to add it to the brass layer because I learned I'm going to now click out of entity info so I don't start drawing stuff where I don't want stuff to be. All right, this guy right here goes into this hole right here. And I'm not saying this because I know Steam Engine so well. I just last night went through and looked at the plans. So That's cheating as far as I'm it concerned. totally is. But it's one of those <laughs> cheating things where everybody wins. So All right. just like in school, everybody <laughs> wins. A's for everybody. <laughs> Um, this should be done in SolidWorks. I'm just saying. Yeah, it certainly could. Absolutely. Um, SolidWorks is commonly used for this kind of work. And, and we, uh, we have a lot of customers who use SolidWorks for this kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We work for SketchUp, so we'll probably be doing it in the old SketchUp one. But if there was a stream that showed making this thing in SolidWorks, it would definitely be interesting to watch and see yeah. the differences. And yeah, it'd be cool. All right. I got another... Oh, that's right. This goes, oh, this goes right here. All right, so I got another kind of an extruded rectangle, but you see it does have a little bit of a right there. It's a technical term, little thingy there. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that real quick. It is 21.5 by 36. So that's that initial rectangle. Um, so it's got one of these guys. No, this one's a little different. This is different from our previous circle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that up. Eight. And then looks like uh, Alright, I'm gonna change my default color on my default layer because I guess I'm just gonna go with a, a grayish color. That's exciting. Yay, gray. Um, I guess what I could do is, here, let's do this. We'll turn our steel to a little little darker gray. 
and then we can just stick with white for our modeling materials. I try to get festive and, and glowy and whatever, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna give up on it. Nope, not living the festive life. Of course, now it's gonna draw my reference on this white. Can you set uh, color by layer to be a keyboard Hockey. shortcut? Oh, I wonder. Let's let's see, um, because right now. Oh yeah, sorry. This is one comment I missed earlier. What video games do you guys play? And did you get around to playing Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice? That is not a game I'm familiar with. I've not heard of it either. Um, <laughs> but we can talk about video games. That's cool. Yeah, sure. I personally don't play many video games, but if I do, usually they're the, of the Nintendo 64 variety. I don't really have a new generation console or anything like that, so I like the older games. Classic is what they call that. Yeah. Matt's, Matt's into the classics. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? You got any games you... I do. You there's, a, there's a handful of games that I do enjoy playing. Um, I think... One that I'm excited about that's coming out soon is Borderlands 3. I definitely like playing Borderlands. That's a fun game. Um, I think I've been playing a lot of... Played through all of the Arkham games, Batman. I mean, how could you not like a game where you get to be Batman? That's mm -hmm. like a dream come true, right? <laughs> or that might just be me. No, yeah, I love Batman. I used to wear a cape when I was a kid. Yeah. Running around being Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I prefer to be Bruce Wayne. I pretend to get out of a Maserati and, you know. That was my thing. How about you guys? Anybody have a, a favorite uh, game out there? Besides Sekiro, apparently. Um, it's from FromSoft, makers of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. I've heard Dark Souls. That doesn't say much, but I've heard of it. Uh, Aaron says, uh, have it, has a retro pie. Good to play the old games. Ah, yes. Heard good things about it. There's definitely a lot of, like, mods and that kind of stuff you can do for... And then there's all the classic, uh, what, Nintendo Classic or whatever they call those. They're reproduction. They're not reproduction. They're official consoles, but... Yeah, yeah those little, little boxes you can buy. Mm -hmm. there, there's some fun games on there. It's yeah. amazing how much time you can spend playing Mega Man 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, but it's just as aggravating as, oh, oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, Battlefield. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, love to see a Friday session of you building a platformer level, like in Banjo-Kazooie. Ooh, that'd be cool. Like a that'd 3D be fun. platformer. Little, uh... Yeah, love, I gotta love the Banjo-Kazooie, yeah. That's a good one. That is that's a fun game. Oh, that's great. For sure. Bottles. Gruntilda? Oh man. <laughs> one of my great regrets in life is I never played Banjo Tooie. You know? Sequel. Perhaps I'll uh someday. Hey, it's someday it's out there. You can it. actually uh right play now it? on uh you'd have to get a more modern console, I think. But uh you know, you have like the arcade thing going on and Xbox and such and oh, you can yeah. actually get that i only play physical media sorry dog <laughs> uh yeah if I, no. if I can't touch it but that'd be fun i've never seen a long time ago somebody made a platformer inside sketchup have you seen that the uh the game oh the uh that was uh not uh, scott Person. scott len len -Gear. the guy uh who has started bits box with aiden chopra yes scott created that mm-hmm and yeah, that was uh, that was pretty cool. That's sweet. He's like just push pulling new platforms and jumping back and forth. To him. You like, move oh your character gosh. through a SketchUp level, and you use the uh, the tools inside of SketchUp to yeah to help help your character along. Which is, I, I would go I would go so far as to call that genius. That is that's awesome. But yeah, it was a, there was a night. It was a night you had to move through the the level. Mm -hmm. Banjo-Tooie is the best sequel ever. Oh, man. Way. I'm kind of glad that I uh, have not played it. So I have something to look forward to. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, man, I wish I never watched that TV show so I could 
you know, experience watching it again. But I feel like I have this experience just nice. waiting for me. Oh my gosh! Nailed it. That's a win for Matt right there. Yeah. Oh baby. Too bad the cartridge is like fifty bucks or something. Like <laughs> oh, man, it's like what? How much it was when it came out? I used SketchUp to model my basic case for the Retro Pi, Pi and 3D printed it. Oh, that's awesome. Sweet. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Did you share that at Zed on Warehouse? Can we can we all go grab that? Oh, yeah. I want to print me up some Retro Pi case. All right, there we go. This is five. New circle. I'm moving on to this uh, piece number nine right here. Number nine, like Plan 9 from Outer Space. Have you ever actually seen that? I've seen clips. I've never watched the whole thing. I don't, yeah, I don't... I think I've done the same. I don't... I, mean, I guess I don't know anybody who's actually watched the entire thing. Yeah, it seems like... It's one of those like you, you've seen The Room, right? Or I've seen parts of it. You've That's seen parts of it? Same, okay. same thing. I don't think I could ever... Uh, because the room to me is like amazing for its terribleness. Maybe more watchable. Maybe just because it's newer. You know. Wait, I thought you were a retro guy. I'm like, what you just saying? <laughs> yeah, well, it still came out in like 2000. That's true. Or it's still, or still, like that. yeah, super it's old. old. <laughs> Nine pieces down. Uh, Thirty-one to go. Is that right? We're pretty close, yes. Like I said, some of these, if I get look at page two, I have a lot like this, where they're just like pegs. Like this one right here. Oh, that's not going to take me. That's not nothing. Mm -hmm. So these are the last few of the big brass pieces, and then we move on to the next page where it's uh, it's going to go quicker. So we'll get to, uh, we're only an hour and a half in. We got time. We got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Australia. Always enjoy your 5.30 a.m. Saturday morning sessions. Madman, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one of the things I'm going to do right now with my styles is I'm going to go in and change the colors of my lines to by axes. And um, no, I'm not, because that is not going to help me at all. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to change it back to all the same. I was trying to think of a good way to show which one of my lines were on axes, but that's not actually going to do it. Hey, Dave R. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Dave. Good to have you on. Matt was just talking about you earlier. Name dropping you earlier, yeah. All good stuff. It's not gonna work. Something's not the right size. Um, I was saying earlier, Dave, how uh, I won't say you called me out, but you did uh, send me your lathe drawing. Oops. You sent me that lathe, and uh, so it was very similar to what I'm attempting to do right now. All right, what's what the problem is? Okay, maybe rapidly approaching that spot where you're like, <laughs> start over. All right, shake it off. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Um, so it looks like I don't see, what I'm looking for is this dimension right here. Because I have this solid circle, which is the dimension from the center to the center line of my screws. Those screws then butt up to this inner piece right here. So that's where that goes, but I don't actually see that. So I'm assuming that that's just an inch and a quarter in from my screw line. So I'm, I guess I'm just going to do that. Oh man, yep, all right. Square one, let's do this again. <laughs> Circle, <laughs> all right, you gotta, you know. 33, half of 33 is 16.5. Work through it. Um, right. Iron Man helmet was so helpful, thank you guys. Awesome. Nice, glad you enjoyed. Were you able, did you make something specific with the knowledge you gained? from that particular model.
Dave says, hold still. He's trying to read the drawing. Oh. To figure out how to... How about now? How about now? How about now? How about now? <laughs> <laughs> Here. I can't, I can't move it over too much because then I can't see anything anymore. Here, we'll do this. We'll, we'll try to get the best both worlds. There we go. Um, I will say I'm subconsciously getting much better at uh, modeling on this section. I don't model behind my head as often. I don't think I do as no, often I as I you're... used to. Yeah, no, I think you're good. All right. Pull this straight down. There we go. Um, the Iron Man uh, person said they designed PUBG helmet. Sweet. Nice. Players unknown. For those of you who aren't in the know, Battleground. Er. There we go. 45. And then again. Times three. That was one of those. That was a little, a little more work than I wanted it to be. But uh, there we go. All right. Great. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's like that just was. All right, but I'm gonna blame some of that on the drawing. That wasn't, that wasn't all me. Sometimes it's all me. I'll take credit. That I, sometimes it's all about me. <laughs> that one I will share the blame on. All right, so this is going to come up five. And this is going to come up five. And then, yep, saw that coming. Um, would be really cool to see the steam engine in action. Any plugins that can run simulations? Yes. Probably not that we're going to do today. That's also true. <laughs> That's also true. Um, but uh, yeah, like MS Physics, I guess, could be one that you could set all the parameters and everything up for it and get it chugging along. Speaking of chugging along, is that a steam engine in here? I do believe it is. That is similar to what it would sound like. That's exactly what it might sound like, maybe. Um, nope, too much. Dave All right. said the centers of the holes of the screw holes are 14 millimeters from the center. Don't draw the last circle and save the screw holes until you have the thing 3D and the flanges in place. That um, would have been great advice. That is exactly <laughs> <laughs> what I should have done. I'm just uh, trying to get off the sh ship without burning myself at this point. It's kind of how it's how it's going. All right, the thing's in. Whew. And then I got Steam this. Steam can burn you too. It, it is. Just gets hot. Steam's burning. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna make this into a group. That was intentional. That time I made it a group instead of a component, but there's a reason. Um, there's actually two reasons. One is I'm going to do this thing. Uh, there's this five by three, so I'm going to draw it right now. Um, rectangle, rectangular piece. Looks something like this. That comes in at 45 degrees. Whoa, I clicked right to 45. Oh, man. That's never happened. Meant to be. Ever. All right, and that is I'm not my here's my my issue now is do I have the proper information to place this exactly where it needs to be it looks like it's in the middle so it looks kind of like if I was to grab this here that that looks like what it's showing here um so I have it lined up. Unfortunately, I have it lined up right at the end. See that? So rather than try to grab this and move it because I don't have an axis to move along, I'm just gonna open this up and use push-pull to make it longer. 
Work smarter, not harder. I say that whenever anybody tells me not to be afraid of hard work. Rarely works for me. <laughs> it rarely works for you. You rarely work. Ouch. No, I'm just kidding. You're a <laughs> hard, dedicated worker. Um, All right, so I'm gonna... Red Sea, you'll laugh, but I do not understand English, yet I like your stream. Could have fooled us. I thought you were fluent, but... I'd say you got to understand some, or, or was all of that written through uh, Google Translate? I guess you don't know that, that I'm asking you that question. <laughs> Dang. That's the tough part of... But yeah, SketchUp is multicultural and crosses borders. And we need strong borders. I'll leave it at that, but... <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, any, everybody can speak SketchUp. Totally did it wrong. Um, Try again. At least when you create a game level, you won't have to worry to, uh, about the math too much. Just have fun world building. Ah, yes, true. Not so many exact uh, specifications. That sounds like my jam. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. That's what I needed. Okay, almost there. Um, going to... Uh, there's a sleeve inside this one piece, so I'm going to draw that real quick. Because I think it's... Yep. There we go. Hop inside. Where does this... This is where the uh, details are a little sparse. Or actually, not just sparse so much as blurry, maybe. Um, the bronze sleeve is in some amount. Is this the bronze sleeve, maybe? Is this the three inches or three millimeters in? Actually, looks like that's maybe another lip. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put that up three. I'm gonna push pull it to the opposite side and then pull it back down three. That's going to work. And then make a new cutter. Right here for whatever this thing is. group and then same thing just use my invisible center line right here to flip her over and then I can say grab that make that a group select this cut it out of this group it's gonna give me this little lip same thing down here select cut cut all right so now I have two groups this group right here is what was it? A bronze sleeve. So that's going to go to the layer bronze. This group right here is brass. So it's going to go to the layer brass. And I'm going to grab both of them together because they don't actually have a separate name. They're just all together called component nine. So I'm going to make that component number nine. Whew. All right. Nice. Uh, can you model Mercedes Benz Stadium? We will put it on the suggestion list for sure. Yeah, it's certainly a cool, cool stadium. Yeah, Especially cool. how it opens. That's. Can't really do it with my hands, but I can make it. You can tell from the sound what you're going for, though. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of like an octopus kissing. Yeah. Dave said, "Good job." Got a little hairy there for a minute. It's coming together. I can practically hear it now. <laughs> I was also thinking a steam engine, because uh, you put you can put them in a train. You can. You can do the horn, you know. Still the wrong horn. The steam engine horn. That's the that's the clown car. This was this was labeled as a steam engine. I feel like we got to tell somebody about that because that does not. 
That's not. That's not. It's I should. I have that on loop, so maybe I should just leave it on for the rest of the stream. What do you guys think? Leave it on. I'll be honest. I'm not a fan with that plan. Fan of that plan. <laughs> well, let the people talk. Maybe we should create a poll. <laughs> it is heartily annoying. Joy. Um. Joel asks about your uh, 3D mouse. What is that awesome keyboard knob hardware that you're using to speed up your movements? Um, it is a 3D connection space mouse enterprise. The link is actually in the YouTube description. But, uh, yeah. So it's got the little uh, puck, puck for the 3D control and then the, some keyboard shortcuts and a screen readout of, of uh, the shortcuts. Absolutely not a requirement, but it is kind of a nice option to have. It does uh, somewhat speed up input. All right, I'm going to use an extension, which I have been loving. It's not a new extension either, but uh, it is. What's your problem? Oh, I had a bad curve. Bad curve. <laughs> I don't know where that is. Um, it is this extension called a Debio, I think it's a Debio, push line. And this is awesome because what I can do is, so this edge right here, let's see, is five minus, so it's three. So I can grab a line and I can basically push pull it like push pull does with a surface, but with lines. So I can say bring that up three meters. And uh, I have that, which is cool because sometimes I don't have the actual surface I want to pull up or it's multiple surfaces. So I can just pull the edges up and close it up later. Uh, really cool, cool option to have. Um, of course, now I don't have a face anymore. So there we go. James said the honking sound doesn't count unless you have a red nose on. Told you, clown car. Perhaps for next stream, I'll get you a uh, clown nose. Get me, this is your sound, buddy. Face paint. <laughs> you're the, <laughs> you seem to be you're latching the... onto it so much. I think people will, re will remember this stream as the... The time you made up the clown uh, noise. Oh, uh, boy. Um, Dave said he's trying to orbit and pan the YouTube video. It definitely <laughs> happens. Been there, too. I feel like that happens to you a lot when you have reference images. You're like, I'm trying to look behind yeah. it. Just a 2D image. It's, yeah, it happens to the best of us. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, are these models available? I would like to sharpen my skills. Um, so we did find these plans online at the website, which I've already forgotten. Who, who out there remembers it? You guys got to, we're, we're here. We're in a group. I think it has engineering in the name, but I don't remember. Yeah, there's the engineering. Name. There was a www at the beginning. Um, <laughs> HTTP colon slash slash. Um, maybe the, I don't know if, uh, he's talking about the model itself, like uh -huh. on 3d warehouse afterwards for some of the streams we've, uh, Aaron's posted the models afterwards on 3D, his 3D warehouse account, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make sure, I've been trying to make sure I do that. Um, I'll, I'll get up there. I, I need, I'm a few weeks behind, to be honest. I need to get a bunch of these up, so I'll do that. Uh, Nicholas said he just bought the 3D mouse yesterday. Um, nice. Let yeah, me know definitely. what you think. Good for presentation, and takes a little getting used to. I've used one before, but... Uh, yeah, once, you, once you're used to it, like Aaron, you look like a pro. I will say, so here's my, this is my uh, recommendation for learning to use it, especially if you use something like SketchUp and you've been using it for a long time, which when I got it, I've been using it for about, I don't know, eight, ten years before. I had a hard time at first because, well, for one thing, I actually reversed a couple of the commands. So where they have a, oops, something's not, not welded. There we go. Um, but you can have it set up either that you're like kind of moving the thing around in your hand, right? Like holding right. the thing or that you're moving the camera around. So there's a couple different ways to control it. Yeah, and, and what, what I struggled with was well, like I said, eight years of uh, using the, the, the wheel, 
on a, on a three button mouse. So what I, what I did was I actually disabled the wheel for two days. So I couldn't zoom with this at all. I had to do it over here. And that was, uh, that was my way to retrain my brain because it, it was not up for that game at first. You got to train the main brain. That's right. All right. Um, yeah, sorry to anybody who had uh, earbuds on during the sound. <laughs> Bicycle horn and earbuds don't mix. Sorry about that. <laughs> Send all your uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor medical bills. Care of Aaron. I don't like how this is getting pinned to me. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to save, says Lawrence. Do you guys know me? What can I say? <laughs> All right, this is coming together. This is this is starting to look pretty sweet. Um, I got some more pieces here. Um, that was ten. Here's eleven. Oh, this is where uh, this is cool because this is where the piston rides back and forth inside of this space right here, and then. Uh, you can actually see where the arm goes back and forth through this window, which is kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's 150. It seems like you're in between parts right now. I don't know if you want to take a break now or if you want to knock. Sure, one I'm gonna do one more. more. One more. Knock one more out. This is this little piece. It's uh, I believe it sits right here and closes this up. Um, so we'll get that screwed on and then we'll then we will break. Break. <laughs> um, how to build house. Um, Plenty of ways to build a house, certainly. Um, check it out on YouTube. I would search YouTube. Uh, um, will you animate the engine or it's uh, just a still model? Yeah, I think this for this stream, we'll just leave it uh, just to be the regular model itself. But uh, like Aaron said, we might make it uh, available to download on 3D Warehouse. So you can certainly... Um, Try to animate it yourself or uh, bring it into another software and animate it as well. Yeah, maybe I'll throw that out as a, uh, a challenge. Unofficial, nothing, nothing official, but uh, when I post it, I may uh, call it out on the forum and see if anybody wants to get in there with MS Physics or something like that and see what they can do. Because uh, my MS Physics ability is somewhat limited. Like I, I like it; it's pretty cool. But I like making things fall over. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the <laughs> speed that I operate at. Um, Running something into like a brick wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's exactly how I do it. Um, yeah. So maybe we'll uh, I'll throw it up there. I'll I'll mention it, and then you guys can do what you want with it. Nice. Right, sounds good. Um, James says he got a 3D mouse because of watching this stream, and he loves it. He says he wished it worked in ZBrush, though. It, I'm kind of surprised by that. That seems like that would be perfect for ZBrush, so I'm, I'm a little surprised that that's not an option. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then Dave says, are you going to pry the bolt hole out of the cylinder and then add them to the cover plate? Oh, that was a question for me? Um. <laughs> I'm just reading them out, and I'm hoping you understand them. <laughs> uh, sounds like you're reading ahead, because uh, I don't know what, what that... Do you, what would you do? I mean, just hypothetically. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, he says it's too late. Maybe it's these holes that you had in this current item there. Oh, that could... I'm not sure. Uh, can you send me the plan during the break? That's also what Dave said. Probably so. Oh, this actually tapers. Check that out. Woo, that's something. So that's seven. What is this? Oh, five? Not, I'm, I'm, I'm lost on what I'm looking at at this point. I'm not sure what this right here is. Oh, four. There we go. Four. So it goes to here. So I'll take this one. Move it upwards. 
You know, there's a funny thing. I think it's funny. I don't, it's probably not very funny. About working in negative space. One, two, three. Take this one and move it. Um, so I used to do building design. That was kind of what what I did. It was SketchUp and with other software. And there is uh, just a weird mindset when you have to work in like negative space. Like drawing a ceiling, a vaulted ceiling, is not more difficult than drawing a roof. But the fact that you're drawing it upside down, it's it's weird. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like kind of upsetting to at least my brain. Um, so I'm looking at this going, this is the inside and it tapers, well now I'm upside down and backwards, but this tapers in and like my brain kind of shut down there for a second and didn't really want to do it. <laughs> Alright, so that's the circle. Um, regarding the ZBrush thing, uh, the nature of ZBrush is 2.5D voxels. It's not actually 3D, but it is simulated and you can export 3D. So perhaps that's why it doesn't work. Yeah, um, but you can still, with in ZBrush, you can still uh, spin your model around in 3D as you're drawing too. So I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, that it is it is different. It's not a traditional 3D uh, thing. But I'm I'm just I was surprised. I figured that that would that's something that 3D connection would have a driver for. Um, Lawrence put a Sterling Traction Engine 1859 on the warehouse. That also had a lot of different metal finishes. Nice. I'll have to check it out. All right. like a cool one. I totally did that backwards. That's that's really cool. Yeah, you were asking about break time. Probably should have gone with that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's okay. I, I think I can fix this. I grab this, and I'm just going to copy it over here. The big part where the small part's supposed to be, and the small part where the big part's supposed to be. All right, so I'm going to make that a group. I'm going to I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it this direction. I'm going to come into here. How do I clean this up? I'm going to push this up. Um, since Aaron likes things that fall over, maybe model a Jenga set and then have the bus run over it. I've heard worse ideas. Yeah. Dave says delete all those inner circles. Yeah, you're right. Just get rid of it. Sometimes you just try to hold on to things, which is a silly thing to do. Oops. Up here, um, what are the advantages of SketchUp versus other modeling and 3D design programs? I personally mention ease of use. Um, it's quicker to learn. It's uh, people get up and running in a fraction of the time that it takes to learn other softwares. So that would be probably the big thing that I would point out. Um, and I mean, having used a few dozen different CAD packages, 3D modeling packages, I gotta say by far, I have way more fun using SketchUp than anything else. So that would be my, my thoughts. You guys, I would love to hear anybody else's ideas on that. What you guys got? Why, why do you use SketchUp instead of something else? Yeah, we got the, of course, great community. And uh, Dave says, you get these guys with SketchUp. It's more Aaron than anything, certainly. But uh, yeah, 
Yeah, he does the videos, and uh, yeah, we got the whole whole setup, the whole community, and the, of course, three D warehouse is a large community as well with uh, some nice models on there for you. Yeah, that, that's that is another spot that, uh, again, having used lots of other software, I gotta say that we are lucky that we have we just have one of the best software communities I've ever seen. Um, Forums very helpful. Yeah, it's uh, timely. I guess not timely, punctual. <laughs> no, I mean uh, you can get help for your problem pretty quickly on the old forums there. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah, and it's it's cool. It's very welcoming, very uh, vibrant community, and we have a pretty awesome user conference every few years. That's that's pretty cool. Agreed. All right. May have sweated a little bit during that, but I got that thing did. Nice. Yeah, looks good. Woo. What, what are we on now? What is this? This is number 11. Um, I was actually thinking about that, of course, as I looked at this, because it would be so cool to uh, do a couple things. One is I was thinking 3D printing it. Not that I would, you know, be able to put steam into something printed from plastic. Obviously, that would that would probably wouldn't work out great. Um, but I thought it would be a cool model to print just to be able to assemble it and set it up on my desk kind of thing maybe. I thought that would be pretty sweet. Um, I don't know where this goes. I think um, it might go between Dave these Dave said you need to radius the edges. Yeah, else? we talked about that earlier, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I might come back and uh, round all the edges off. Um, I'm just afraid I'm gonna run out of time right now. Uh, oh, it goes between these. That's why. Mm. I jumped. I jumped the gun. I preassembled. There she is. Right there. Uh, James says, uh, in time, the 3D. This is back to the 3D mouse and ZBrush could happen. Um, Learn to sketch up from the start with a 3D mouse so it was easier to use. Um, and then also said why he uh, used SketchUp because Blender is not intuitive. SketchUp uh, should have better recognition than it does. It's extremely powerful and the ability to have real world measurements is awesome. Thanks, that's great to hear. I'm, we're certainly happy and glad that you're liking it and you're using it. Look, I'm just off. Something's not right. That screw hole lined up. That screw hole didn't. That screw hole didn't. Something. Something's not right. Let me do this. All my screw holes line up perfectly there. Hmm. Does that mean my screw holes are off on this? All right, Aaron says he's got to go. Taking off. Thanks for Thank you very in. much, Aaron. Yeah. Appreciate you watching, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Keep on keep on having that name. <laughs> oh, I just apparently lined it up wrong. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. Like a glove. Sweet. Nice. I deserve a break today. A break, yeah. Perfect. All right. We'll take 10. Back at it. Oh, safe. Done. All right. Yes. Be back in a few. And for the break, we'll leave you guys with warning, warning, alert, alert. Oh. Leave this on during the break. Just kidding. Sorry. What did you guys do to upset Matt? Why is he doing that to you? <laughs> it's your sound. I. Oh, well, I'm out. I'm out.
That's cool. How about making a Lego Technic build? That'd be fun. Legos would be fun. Yeah, that would be cool. I like Legos. We'll put it on the list. <sighs> my, uh, my uncle used to design Lego sets. Really? He's had a lot of different, like, kind of varied hobbies and careers he ran his own print shop for a while that's and uh being yeah, a, so. a lego designer is kind of a big deal nowadays i mean that's like uh it's like the chosen few i yeah. remember watching a documentary on a guy who who made it mm -hmm. and uh yeah, he works in a special building with like shutters and because they try to keep stuff secret until lego gets released i thought you were going to say that it was made out of lego the shutters were made <laughs> <out of> Legos. <laughs> no i just remember <laughs> it watching it building. and and the fact that they they keep everything like I guess people come with telephoto lenses mm -hmm. from like across the block to oh, try to right. see the to new kits see. as they're being built. Yeah. Kind of crazy. And there's so much like co branded content or yeah. like IP type stuff that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah, it seems like a really cool place to It does. It seems seems like it would definitely be a fun spot. Alright. Let's get back at it. We got uh, 30 pieces in knockout. That's a short break is all you need. That's right. And really, back to work. You just need the time. That's <laughs> to right. To make all the rest of the pieces. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so I got this little uh, bushing, maybe. What do what we? What do we call part 12? Cylinder bottom cover pressure plate. Duh. Silliest question I've ever heard. This will be a quick and easy one. So this is we got a little. Circle right here again staying on axes with my line and that's 7.5 um, In the middle It's like a five so do a 2.5 I'll start by uh, I'll put the circle. I'll put the screw holes in there too screw holes are at 10 so I'm just gonna draw Another circle here. A circle on either side of one. And I'm just going to draw both of them. No, no arrays needed on some of these. They're small and simple enough. And then that is two meters deep. And then I have a seven meter. Oops. Hit vertex tools. That's not the thing I was looking for. Whoops. ENT. Hi guys, just dropping in. This looks interesting. Hey, yeah. Thanks for uh, tuning in for as much as you can. And uh, yeah, it has been interesting so far. Definitely a little different than uh, some of the other kind of more organic or sculpting stuff we've done. This is more exact typing in dimensions. And uh, chug a chug a toot toot. Got to get that steam engine in there. Okay. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope somebody made a clip of Chugga Chugga Toot Toot on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, component number 12. And also made of brass. No idea where this guy goes. So he's just gonna get thrown, whoop, I did it again. Oh, no. Come on, man. <sighs> Aaron goes steampunk. Yeah, that's right. I, I, can't say I full on like commit to that, but uh, I mean, there's something cool about the steampunk aesthetic, the concept of you know what would happen if uh, you know the world evolved with uh, steam as a primary engine type instead of uh, internal combustion. I think that's just I think that's just a cool cool concept. So you'd be pumping water for your car instead of pumping, or maybe it wouldn't even be cars. It'd be uh, we'd be traveling in tubes. Um, yeah, but just like uh, the idea of 
how that evolved. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a cool concept. I like that. And they wear the weird goggles, and they got the trench coats and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that whole thing, I'm, I'm, that's cool. Uh, whatever, that's their thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I get more excited about the, uh, the concept of where that could go story-wise. I think that's, that's kind of cool. Airships, yes. Yes, yeah. airships. Read a couple fun books on that kind of thing. It's a neat idea. This piece right here is Teflon. So I'm going to make it our seafoam green color. Um, 14. See, this is saying some of these are going to get pretty simple. So right here, for example, this rod, I'm going to have a circle with a 3 millimeter radius, which is going to pull up 6. And I'm going to put another one on top of that that is four, which I'll then pull up 45. Oops, I grabbed the middle two. Come on up, buddy. And then I have a one millimeter offset here that is then drop down. I'm going to just drop it one millimeter also. And I'm going to let auto fold create that. So boom. That is my part 14. Nice. So there's a whole bunch of those type shapes coming up. So we may get this done yet. Um, so, wow. Desert Devil just did it again. Oh no. Is a fan of diesel punk. Are you from, do you know what that is? That's a little more the idea of uh, Mad Max. Mad Maxi, right? Like sticking with the whole idea of like the opposite of what steam would be in clean, cleanly. <laughs> it's more like, yeah, like cars and stuff, right? I like that it sounds cool. Uh, I will give it that. Diesel. Yeah, diesel, uh, cool stuff. You now they got the the beer. They call that the diesel. They got the uh, what is it, the bush? Is that diesel? Have you ever heard of that? Bush beer? No. Because you got the bush light, of course, and then you got the bush heavy or whatever people call that. The diesel, diesel fuel. Is that a regional thing? I've not heard that before. Maybe. Maybe it's just a. Maybe I've heard it, of course, in Michigan. So perhaps it's a Michigan that thing. That could be. That could be. Because some places, I'm not going to pick on anybody, but some places really enjoy themselves some Coors, where some places that's considered the cheap beer. Some places they drive it in from other states. So, mm -hmm. that's yeah, regional preference. Didn't it, you, I did, I, this was before my time, my beer time anyhow. But uh, Coors used to be like only available around here, right? Around in Colorado. And then, yeah, people would, like if anybody had it, it was like, oh my God, you got Coors, dude. And then they started just distributing... Yes. Send it everywhere. Wide, but yeah. In fact, the the Coors uh, family still like a big deal, right? It's a family-owned gig. Cool. Yeah. Actually, back to the diesel. I was telling you this is off mic, uh, but uh, earlier I was telling Aaron that I went to Chicago uh, to the not for this reason, but I was there uh, for a wedding, and I went to the Museum of Science and Industry. Uh, cool museum over there. First of all, there was a steam locomotive that this steam engine might very well fit inside. But also, took a tour of a German submarine from WW2 they have in there. And uh, went to the diesel engine room. And apparently stale diesel smells like wax, like crayons. And uh, it still smells like that. They couldn't get the smell out. This has been like whatever, sixty years or something. <laughs> Sixty five years and that's staying still power have, right there. It's still stick have, around. Like it still is like overwhelmingly cranny in there. So if it was a diesel punk world, I guess is what I was getting to, it would smell like wax. So I kinda like the world we've got now. Which I guess smells We got a whole lot we we got a we live in a potpourri world. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got so many smells. Yeah. All type of nose noses. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Greetings from Turkey. Hello. Thanks for watching. 
And bravo to you, they said. Bravo, dude. Oh, I'll take it. Yeah. Thanks back, dude, perhaps. I liked it. I don't like to assume, you know, uh, I don't know if people are men or women, so I don't want to offend anybody if I call somebody dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, diesel punk is like steampunk, but with the 50s aesthetic. Ah, that makes sense. So it's like grease, kind of. Greasers, but they're dieselers. That's cool. I, I can respect that, too. Um, that last pin is a group, and it's not solid, said Dave. I don't know if this is outdated. Oh. You're right. I think I, I probably got an internal circle there. We'll, uh, I might have 48 internal pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. I'm clean right up, though. That's right. Steampunk is normally Victorian-styled. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the diesel would have the 50s. Uh, the that's 1950s. A, that's a big difference. Yeah. Victorian era versus the uh, 50s. Yeah. The same. Pittsburgh has Iron City beer. Nice. Ah, uh, yes. The Iron Belt. The Rust Belt. Some people have called it. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. As I say, going back to uh, you were just talking about uh, Chicago. That's where my family's from. Oh, cool! And uh, we we're talking about this yeah, again before we got started. We were talking about uh, the Museum of Science and Industry. It's a very, very cool uh, spot. And uh, I was saying that one of my favorite spots downtown was the Shed Aquarium, which is really cool. It's Especially when you're in landlocked Colorado, yeah. aquariums aren't really it's the, cooler than the, the best Denver thing you could do. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> a lot yeah. cooler. But the shed aquarium, that was that was pretty sweet. All right, what do I do, what do I do wrong here? What's half of sixty five? That's my problem. Thirty thirty two point five. In Germany, diesel is also beer with cola. Oh boy, I don't know if I like that. Hmm. I have mixed feelings about that thought. What, what would you What would you say? Uh, have you yourself tried such stuff? Yeah, have you ever had this German diesel? Uh, James says, I am in Loveland, Colorado. Ooh, oh, nice. Not far away at all. Locally. Locally located. Coors. Coors in Idaho, not just a local beer. I remember they had it in Idaho uh, in the 70s, before the aluminum cans. Ooh, nice. Um, were you at the Shed Aquarium before or after the restoration? I it's been a while since I've been there, I'll be honest. I went, uh, when I moved away from Chicago when I was 10, came to Colorado. Um, but, uh. Sounds like you were right around the single digits when you, uh, went to the aquarium. Yeah. So I was, I was young. We, we've been back and it's, it, but it's a cool spot. I, I was actually managed to take my kids back there, which was pretty cool too. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. But it is a, uh, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head about the restoration, to be honest. But it is a really cool aquarium. All right, I'm going to do some more subtracting. Got solid groups here, and I'm just going to swing around and cut them one after another out of this. This is cool. Thanks. I'm in heaven. It's nice up here. <laughs> nice, yeah. I'm. I feel like we're in heaven as well. Friday afternoons are my heaven. Right. SketchUp is my heaven. Modeling okay. space. Um, the axes. My right. pearly gates. Pins. Um, the Rocketeer helmet, jetpack, and pistol would uh, be cool to model. Ooh, that would be cool. I like that concept. Yeah. We will write it on the list. I heard a rumor. You guys tell me if you've heard this too. I heard a rumor that they were talking about remaking Rocketeer. Did anyone else hear that? I'm not even sure I know what the Rocketeer is. That's, it was actually kind of a... Uh, a little bit of a 
victim of bad timing because it came out right about the like a sci-fi boom. I'm trying to remember the other movies that came along when Rocketeer did. Um, but there was a handful of them, and really what ended up happening was it just kind of it was Disney did it. So a guy who strapped a rocket to his back and flew. Oh, that's the general concept. But uh, it came out at kind of a weird time where maybe it didn't have the same level of special effects as what was coming out. and uh, But uh, still, a, cool, a super cool concept I like. Let's see. Uh, this is back to the beer and cola thing. Diesel is not as, as popular as Rattler which is beer with Sprite or similar drinks. Oh, boy. I've heard the, you know, you got the Shandies. That's like uh, with like the beer and then you got like the, you know, yeah. I know with like lemonade in, but I don't know. Uh, grapefruit know. juice. Yeah. Um, but beer with Sprite just seems like, I've heard of that. Yeah, they got the alcoholic root beer there, you know. And then yeah, of we got some got of that the, in uh, round here. Yeah, and then they got those like seltzer waters that are alcoholic or whatever. I had the alcoholic kombucha and stuff. If, but if you can it add, uh, things, seems like. I think if you can, if you can, uh, <laughs> you can drink it. You can put booze in it. <laughs> I was gonna say booze or caffeine seems to be kind of the way to to do this. Is uh, yeah, is it a popular drink. Let's caffeinate it or let's make it alcoholic or double it up and go for a local on it. Boom. Um. Could you model a 1911? I think that's like a type of firearm. Is that correct? Perhaps. Did it. <laughs> a little bigger. Um, yeah, possibly. We'll put it on the list as well. I did. I did it. All right. This is kind of a. This is kind of cool. Uh, the end of this actually has, sits in kind of, a, has a radius along the end. See that 20 degree intersection right there? So what I'm going to do is draw a circle from the center, straight out again, 10 millimeter. No, wait, that can't be right. 20, radius of 20, because that's what I just said. All right, bring it out, 20. Doesn't look right either. 20, what am I doing wrong here? Radius of 20, yes. Oh, that radius is pulled off of somewhere, somewhere weird. Hmm. That's odd. Let me if I take this. Put it right down here in the middle. Nope, that goes past it. All right, I'm going to set this aside and maybe trim some geometry later then. Because I don't get that measurement. R20. Ew. Okay, never mind. Now I figured it out. So just a matter of time, guys. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a circle. Lock to this plane from the center here and I'm gonna bring that out 20. Right, now I'm gonna drop a line like this. Is that one that line you just drew is that connected to the circle and it looks like it's off? It is off. Alright so this is the arc we want to push pull into this, or we want to slice into this, specifically that. Well, actually, it's the opposite of that because it's going to be cut out. So it's actually this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this some size and then take this whole thing. Bring it up. And this will happen sometimes. What I want to do right now is I want to snap this to the side of the circle. But you see I, I can't because 
the block I'm moving gets in its own way, this is where X-Ray comes in, because then I can just come in here, snap to it like that. And this isn't going to take out a whole lot of material. Um, so I'm just going to grab all of it. Clean that up. Just grab all of it, like I did on some of the earlier pieces, and just intersect with selection. And I am going to have some inside out faces because I didn't reverse that curved face before I did that. But that will get me. Oops, there we go. That's what I was looking for. And let's, uh, let's check it in monochrome. Yeah, this piece is backwards. So I'm going to reverse that face. And then I can make this into my group. Nope, components. What number are we on right here? 19. Flying along. Nice. Uh, catch up on some comments here. Oops. Um, and do it. Ah. Uh, Aaron, how long have you been working with SketchUp? I think it's right around four years, right? A little over four years? I've been working, yeah, at the company four years. I've been using the software about eight years before that. So. Adds up right around 12 years, as far as I can tell. Yeah, so it, math, math's, math usually works. I'm, I'm usually good with it. Uh, let's see. The, the last Rocketeer was so cool. Doing it again, uh, again would be great. And someone else says, uh, I heard the rumor about the remake, uh, like you were asking about, but Disney won't do it. Oh. Uh, YouTube. YouTube is here. Thanks for tuning in again, YouTube, of course. Uh, just arrived. Any news or comments on the best bus ever? Yeah, Aaron uh, mentioned at the beginning of the stream, but it looks like we had some more um, submissions. And uh, when does it go until? The it goes the end of the month. Until the end of the month. So still a few days left to submit your best bus ever design. Uh, Marvin, mm. gotta go. Thanks for the tutelage. We'll catch the rest later. Awesome. Thanks for watching, and we appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Coming down, tuning in. Um, steam engines dribbles from the side of mouth. Ha oh, ha! Oh. <laughs> I got you. Love that. Love that steam. Love that st uh, steam stream. Um, looks like Dave has some stuff for you. I think this is probably outdated at this point. Um, just curious when he said, did he already model the 1911? No, um, we'll put it on the list for future streams and perhaps, uh, perhaps you can catch it on a future Friday. All right. I think I'm done with this page. Um, I'm just going, I'm not going to get rid of it though. I'm going to keep it here for my reference, slide it over, bring in the next page. Uh, let's save. say, oh, I'm going to save. Let's say you were editing a group and then you realized you were drawing outside of the group. How would you add that geometry to the group without redrawing? I would guess uh, paste in place. That's where I would go. Do a selection, grab that geometry you created, cut it, control X, then open the group you want to put it into and do paste in place. Edit, paste in place. Paste in place puts it in the context that you're currently in. So if you're inside the group, it puts it there in the exact XYZ location it is inside the other model. So paste in place actually works across models too. So you can grab something from one model and paste it, you know, regionally where it was. It's a cool command um, that I think a lot of people don't, you know, think about or give, give proper... Credence too is that the right word? Credit, thought, think about. It's good stuff. That's yeah, what I'm, saying. What I'm saying good stuff. Gotcha. Uh, also, looks like people had already set the pace in place thing. Nice minutes before. Notice that. So uh, thanks for you guys for answering for us. It's very interesting. I feel myself like I'm watching a master who is doing a hand forged axe and uh, from past centuries. Ooh. I like that. That imagery. Would you rather be an axe man or a st uh, steam man? <laughs> Wrong axe. Sorry. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, axes are cool. I got to do a uh, little bit of, I, I won't actually call it, well, it was it was blacksmithing. I got to do a little, little smithery. Um, uh, along with a buddy of mine, we built a coal forge, uh, heated up and uh, hammered out some leaf springs. That was pretty cool. Um, pounded on them. It was it was definitely it was a fun time. It was a good time. That is a uh, it is cool. It's hard. It's that the thing that got me was so he had a. I'm trying to remember how heavy his sledgehammer, maybe eight pound hammer, that we were using. To just we heated up leaf springs just to pound them flat, and then uh, he had tools and sanders and grinders and stuff to make knives. Mm -hmm. And it blew my mind how tired I was after a very very short amount of time. Right, <laughs> I was sore almost immediately. Yeah, it was it was rough. So I, uh, I respect for people who do that for real. Yeah, <laughs> and everything was hot. It was all hot <laughs> entire time. <laughs> that was that was that was tough too. Um, when's the last time you saved? Just oh. before I brought this in, but never hurts to hit it again. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make this into a group. Um, and then back to the Rocketeer. Rocketeer could not compete against Terminator 2. That's right. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and, of course, Hook. You said yeah. bad timing? and It was terrible timing. I remember I was, I was reading about it, like, not that long ago. It's actually kind of weird that that came up mm -hmm. and it was just it was such a victim of bad just bad timing it was amazing yeah uh it just yeah sci-fi and then the other fantasy movies that came out just kind of kind of worked it over mm -hmm. uh, let's see what software is this that'll be sketchup sketchup pro uh 2019 is the software that Aaron's using right now. Um, yeah. All right. I'm gonna borrow this piece. Or no, wait. I'm gonna stay on axes. So I'm gonna borrow this piece. And I'm gonna slide it over. I'm gonna delete the original because I don't need that. All right. I want to make this into a cutter, but you can see it doesn't come all the way through. Um, but I can fix that. And do you actually know what? I put a I put a shortcut key on? No, maybe I didn't. W? No, W was draw bezier. Ah, I lost it. <laughs> Component high dress of model. I was, I was doing okay with that for a little while, but it didn't work. All right. Um, I want to take this and continue it through like that. So I'm going to make, I'm just going to sweep this around to make this tube longer so it'll cut all the way through that ring that I just created. So I'm just going to grab this, follow me. Oops, escaped too many. All right, grab this circle. That was broke. Uh, I'm gonna follow me with this shape. Just gonna close that cone. So that should poke through. Let me grab this and make it a solid. Fix those interior shapes. Beautiful. And actually, if I if I come in here, I can get rid of this. And too. we were talking about crayons earlier. This looks to be it, goldenrod crayon. Goldenrod. There's a that's a good name, right there. Burnt sienna. So you should have labeled your uh, <laughs> that's, your layers. It was it was total sienna. You're right. It was so sienna. -y. Sixty times five. Like I've done that before. All right, and then we're just gonna start cutting. Cut that out of here. Oh, not a solid. Fix that too. 48, you see the 48 I'm getting there? That's a broken circle. My 48 sides are uh, causing issues. I'm just leaving geometry behind. I'm not cleaning it up. Isn't there a solid tool command that will let you use one cutting thing for multiple things? Um, yeah, I could have gone through. 
Uh, it's the order of selection that causes an issue there. I could have gone through and uh, explode, make component, um, actually made one cutter out of all those, connected them all together. Um, there's also extensions like uh, Enerot, who I think Enerot Solid Tools, maybe Dave can double check me on this, or Dwayne, um, that lets you do a multiple selection for solid. Uh, oh, I kind of just meant using the middle piece, and then you wouldn't have to click back to the icon every time. Oh, that the problem uses... is, yeah, I was cutting from, so you have to select the cutter first, then what's cut from it. So that was my problem. That was the reason I had to do it that way. Gotcha. Merging's easier because you say just add one on top of another on top of another kind of thing. Gosh. It says trim instead of subtract. Well, yeah, if I was trying to keep the original cutters, I would have done that. They were uh, throwaway geometry, so. Oops, look what I did. I edited that component oh, <laughs> and no. now they all stick through too far. Oh. Well, that's how they look. That's how they work. That's what they're doing. I probably have to have something cut through here, so that's probably not going to work. Um, all right, not a big deal. How far out was that? This is actually this is actually a pretty easy fix. I shouldn't shouldn't be lazy. So what was that? It was three. Man, I'm gonna. Hide everything, because I'm just going to come in here, draw a big, simple cutting plane. Intersect face with selection. And I'm going to double click the end, delete. I'll get rid of the pieces around the outside. There we go. Back to in working order. So yeah, I was tempted. I was tempted to, to cut corners. Glad I didn't feel better about myself. What's that phantom layer you got going on? Is that? I can't. I probably hit space bar while I was in the editing. Let's see if I delete this. Is it going to? Nope. Nothing's on that layer. So that's cool. Um, this is a bunch of components that are going to stay together. This is where I would use a group. There's a lot of discussion about uh, when to use groups versus components, that kind of thing. Generally speaking, for me, a component is the equivalent of a thing in a model. It has physical space, it exists. That's what I would call a component when I make these. And groups end up being kind of uh, collections or containers for me in my workflow. Um, not the only way to do it, of course. There's several, I wouldn't even say arguments, but uh, good reasons to do it one way or another. This is just my workflow. If I'm going to make something, it's going to be a thing. I want to keep track of it, make component. If it's just holding pieces together, then a lot of times I'll make a group. There are certain instances where something like that may be a component, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to make it that group. All right. Um, this is what goes inside there. Uh, 14, 16, 15. So that's one of these guys goes inside of... here and then this guy right here goes here and then there's another one of these copied straight down to here and then there's a piece I somehow missed there is a where you go 14a check my other oh right here 14A. Nice. I missed that. All right, so we're going to draw up a quick 14A. I'm going to turn off my hydra sub model and hide similar components so my drawing doesn't disappear. Quick circle, three, that comes up six. Another circle on top of that. You guys notice that I'm using circle instead of offset to draw these. Offset would work perfectly well. I'm literally doing it because my brain already has to divide eight in half to get the radius instead of the uh, full um, radius times two. See, this is why I'm doing it. Brain stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'd have to divide it and then subtract 
the other one. So for me, it's just quicker to click a circle inside there and bring it out four, but uh, you could absolutely uh, do that and just do offset. In that case, it would have been one meter. And drag that up 19.25. I'm gonna double click on that to drag up the same height, delete that. And then I have a square, a four by four square. So I'm gonna go grab rectangle. I'm gonna hit the option key to get me snapping to the center. I'm gonna go to the center of the circle, drag it out, and I'm just gonna type, I'm gonna get it so it's, see how it's snapping on the square? And I'm just gonna type four count four. There we go, and pull that up, eight. And that becomes Component 14A. Killer. All right, so now we're gonna take that them out. over to where she goes. Um, how about a plane from Crimson Skies? Yeah, that'd be cool. We'll put it on the suggestion list. Um, yeah, you were right about the Enerot solid tools um, having that ability. Oops. Again, I'm gonna grab all these pieces and make that into a group. So they're gonna all function together. That goes into this circle. Because all my circles have the same number of sides, it's gonna be real easy to just snap that right there, like that. Nice. Dang. Looks sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I'm gonna start by seeing if it is this the same size. Uh, I'm using AutoCAD for 2D, and I am really too fast for 3D. I've tried SketchUp and don't love it so much. Uh, feels like it's not good for ide uh, modeling the ideas in my mind. But I know for sure the problem isn't caused by the program. It's all about me. Uh, yeah, hey, I mean, uh, keep at it. Check out some of the videos and tutorials and check out the um, forum if you have any questions. And yeah, maybe it'll, you'll get to know it a little better and you'll... Might click someday. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, that's, that's something I'll throw out there. Is a, it is a valid thing. Um, if your tool is preventing you from doing what you want to do, then that might not be the ideal tool. Um, yeah. There's a lot of... I mean, I have to tell you guys just how much software there is out there. It's all over. Um, but finding the right tool for what you're doing, sometimes that's different job to job. Sometimes it's project by project. It's, it's really up to you, but uh, there's enough software out there that you should be able to find the tool that works for you. So for me, like a lot of stuff works in SketchUp just because I'm so comfortable and whoops, been using it, earthquake, <laughs> and you're using it so long. But uh, you should never sacrifice what you're doing uh, for the software tool. Um, Lawrence says, started with SketchUp at work to do very complex assemblies, then I moved on to Inventor, which is a beast, but it was worth it. However, when I need to do quick concept work, I always fall back to SketchUp. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's, there's reasons that different software packages work, and that's for different deliverables. Depending mm -hmm. on what you're doing at work, yeah, you might need the, the power of Inventor. And like you said, it is a, it's a bigger thing, <laughs> um, and that's, that's, that's cool. There's no, there is no end, one end-all, be-all solution. Uh, so that's that's probably, oh man, come on. I do everything in MS Paint. Yeah. Which, I mean, he, and he rocks it, so. <laughs> Thank you for saying so. Yeah, this is some uh. sweet paint skills. All right, um, uh, just gonna get my screw holes in here. This piece is drawn from so many different angles. I think these four drawings are all of this one piece and it's making my brain not good. All right, just relax and absorb what you're seeing. All right, I'm gonna assume it's a two and a quarter hole again. So I'm gonna put my four holes in Alright, 
go and I can delete this. And then it looks like there's some there's some holes in here, but I'm having a okay, there's four and four. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put get some mm -mm. There's my middle point. Now I can pull off of that my these four holes. Because it looks like this one right here is there we go, two and a half. So pull this one this way, 2.5, push it this way, 2.5, and then it looks like they are four and four. So this is gonna go up four, come down four. And then we have a two inch gap. Look at me using guides like like they're my thing. <laughs> yeah, you're going crazy on the guides. Congratulations me. I gotta pat myself on the back sometimes. <laughs> I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I can throw some rectangles on here. All right, and then I'm gonna go to edit, delete guides, get rid of these three spaces or pieces and then I can extrude that up to a depth of three. All right, that's the first part, that's this. Now I gotta interpret what's this. So there's a hole in the side of it at some point. Um, that's cool. <laughs> so from the side, it looks like, okay, so here, here we go. Um, I don't know how you look man. at this stuff and can tell what's going on. Well, obviously, <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, you got something going. I'm All looking right, at this. So like, this circle, looks circle, like an optical illusion or something. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I don't know. All right, so this right here is the thing. So I have a line at six and a line at. Six. All right. So this part right here raises up some amount. Oh, right here, uh, eleven. All right. So I'm pull it up. But it's not the full width. It's oh, eleven from the middle. There we go. Man, I thought the second page would be the easy ones. <laughs> there is no easy ones. All right, so that's, we're getting there. Getting there, getting there. All right, so I have a 13 radius. So what I'm gonna do, same thing I did before. I'm gonna stick a circle, put a circle way up here above. Raising the flag. Of 13. Wow. The line straight up to intersect it. There's probably other ways to do this as well, but this is what came to mind when I thought of how to do this. So that's my 13 radius, and I should be able to pull that. I'm gonna do right here. So as I push pull, it's gonna stop at the first surface I hit. I can't I can't change that. But what I can do is I can hold down Option and drag it through. That's gonna create a new surface all the way at the other side, but it's gonna run it through. So it ran through. It didn't intersect that geometry though. So one of the things I will have to do is, first I'm gonna select this surface, reverse it, so I have the white side facing up, and then I'm gonna select all that geometry, right click, intersect face with selection. No, I don't want to do that, just delete that there. Ooh. I like when things work out the way that I say they're going to work out. Thanks, nice, yeah. Um, so this is Lawrence who said he used Inventor there. Found that with SketchUp, there's no right way to model a part. But with Inventor, how you start can have bad consequences later, especially with parametric dimensions. I have heard that as well. Um, again, 
it all depends on how, how that works how, or what you're needing to do. But uh, some software, very uh, specific. Yeah, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a, a specific workflow you need to follow. And that's, uh, that's one of the things that, uh, it's a double-edged sword with, with SketchUp because there are so many ways to do some things that uh, some people love it. Some people want to be told, do this, then this, then this. And uh, that's not always, doesn't always work, so. Yeah. Uh, this would be cool in VR. Yeah. Yeah. We have a viewer for a couple headsets and also for mobile phones. Um, has some kind of VR capability, so. Yeah, and I, I was, I uh, got to spend some time had to spend some time learning the the VR viewer for uh, that we have for mobile, and it's really cool because I didn't. I mean, a lot of people don't realize it. There's a uh, the paid version, the full version, actually has VR capabilities, or I'm sorry, AR capabilities, where you can plop a model down in real space and move around it, which is super cool. Yeah, it's like ten bucks or something, right? Yeah. Not too bad. Um, right. I'm sure. What size is this hole? Uh, one day we can model so easily by using artificial intelligence, like in the latest version of Excel. Um, you're so happy when it guesses what you're trying to do in the cell. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said you do modeling inside of Excel. I was <laughs> I was processing that. Yeah. Uh. You can extrude different cells. No, that'd be cool though. Nope. All right. I think this part is done, but there may be more to it than I'm actually seeing right now. So, whoops, you know what? And something happened here. I got something got off right here. There we go. Or around in three o'clock right now. Thanks. Um, so this may be an opportunity for a part one, part two situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I think that piece is done, but I can't. So that looks right. So if I was to do a cross section there, it looks right from the underside. That's what that looks like. I guess I don't really know how it's used inside. So. Yeah, so right now we got a bunch of these little teeny pieces that make up really what's the most important part was where the this, this steam gets passed back and forth to the pistons. Um, and this box is part of it. I just don't know if I did this right or not. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that good for now. But fortunately, because it's a component and the ge geometry is not going to merge, I can throw it in there. And if I find something's wrong, I can, of course, open it back up and modify it. So it's not a big deal to call this done, if, even if I have to come back and make a change later on. I'm gonna call that brass. And uh, let's see, how many of those are there? Is there one on each side or is there uh, 21? There's two of them. So there must be one on either side of this box right here. All right, so I'm gonna draw a couple more pieces. We're gonna go a little bit, a little while longer, but uh, yeah, as long as you guys wanna, well, not as long as you wanna hang out, We'll call it eventually, but uh, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep working on things. This box right here, big brass box, uh, we'll come up 20 meters. And we're gonna go 32 meters and go there. All right, and that has a rectangle inside of it. That is. Here's what I should be doing. You know, sometimes you just start drawing. You don't think about the best way to do it. 
I guess that's maybe this is that falls into the uh, same category as the tool telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. No, I was not referring to myself when I said the tool was telling you what to do. Um, I can say that because it's self-deprecating. <laughs> it's rude if you call somebody else a tool. That doesn't seem right. Fifteen. Is this twenty tall? Hmm. That's fifteen. Whole thing is twenty. Doesn't look the same as that, does it? Uh, over here. All right, I'm gonna throw the circles in and just see what happens. Um, come down three. Yeah, something's not right. Oh, I pulled an overall dimension of 20 here, but it's actually 26. That's why. All right, so this, this comes down three. This line goes up three. There we go. All right, so this three right across here, three right across here, and then um, 20 meters. This is larger than I thought. This is a big one. Yeah, this is, this is for our uh, sp space cannon. Send satellites up. One Space, shot. SpaceX is going to use these these plan to uh, project things into orbit. Yeah, for those who missed the beginning, we are working in meters rather than millimeters. I want to mess with that super tiny stuff, so we are instead uh, drawing everything big and then we'll just rescale once we get our geometry input. And it does look like these holes go all the way through, see according to this right here. So that means I should be able to grab that and push that up 13 plus 13. That's easy math. 26. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mouth just wrote a check that the brain wasn't so sure about. <laughs> All right, let's scoot this over here. We have a couple big circles right here. And I'm going to... All right. 6.5. Take this. Copy that down 13 meters. Draw a four inch radius, which would be an eight inch circle in total, times two. Delete some extra lines. And pull that to the opposite side. Double click here to do the same. And then I'll just triple click to select everything. Right click, intersect faces with selection, and then just delete the redundant geometry. Um, check that for inside outsideiness. No, oh, it's all good. Love it. All right, I'm gonna triple click and make that into a new component. That component is called 22. And is made of brass. Before I can put that together with what I believe are the ends, I think these kind of nestle together something along these lines. Ooh. I believe that these here Teflon gaskets uh, got to go in between them. Rather than modeling that Teflon gasket geometry, I um, uh, had a question about my, my plan to resize. The question is, is that going to affect accuracy? Nope. Resizing keeps everything exactly how it is, puts in our side. SketchUp can deal with maintaining very, very small geometries. It's modification creation of those geometries that it has a problem with. Um, 
remember SketchUp was created to draw architectural models. So the initial tool set was based around drawing things that were, you know, feet and inches. Um, so getting really small, really, really small can be an issue for creation, but it can maintain the geometry. So scaling it down, it will stay exactly how it is. Um, it's just a question if you have to go do uh, modification at a later point, you might want to scale it back up to make those modifications. All right, this is half a meter thick, 0.5, and it is a new group, nope, component, which we will call 23, and that is made of Teflon. What did I just did? I put that inside the group. Oh, hey, someone was just asking about this. I'm gonna come inside this group because I made this in here, so I'm gonna hit Command X to cut it. And I'm gonna come out of that group and edit Paste in Place to drop it right back on the ground. All right, I'm gonna put my Teflon right there. Yes, I do buy my Teflon in Seafoam Green. I'm gonna grab that, copy it right there, and then I can slide that right inside like that. And I gotta get a copy there. I'm a big fan of uh, using rotate on symmetric pieces like this, so I'm gonna grab it, grab the middle of this line I just drew, modifier key to copy it on top. I think that is, oh, totally wrong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> These go outside. <laughs> Oops, I just copied instead of moved. Yeah, I guess there's something to be said for continuously reading the plans rather than glancing at them once and making assumptions. That's pretty sweet looking. This is, uh, this is cool. This is a cool project. Uh, what, did you address this? Uh, will rescaling affect accuracy? Yeah. Okay. You're good. And the 3D printer metal extrusion? Um, you know, there is, stuff is always moving forward with uh, 3D printing. At this moment, right now, um, uh, affordable 3D printing, like what we would have in the office or I'd have at home or something like that, is primarily plastic based or, or plastic variants, materials like plastics. There are uh, materials out there, material manufacturers out there, who put additional materials inside with the plastic. So you can get uh, extruded, I, th I think it's PLA, um, or I think it's PLA, but it has uh, metal shavings in it. So it's cool because you can get it and you can make, you can cause a faux or a rusting effect on it, um, get patinas on the 3D prints real easy. I'll spray salt water on them and they turn green. It's really cool, but they're not as strong as a machined piece of metal. So for something like this, where everything in here is intentionally chose out of non-corroding materials, it's not going to real, really be perfect to 3D print something you're going to put into water and pressure. <laughs> it's not, not going to work real well. I was saying this is something that if you scale it to the right size, you could probably print it. And if you did some good filing and, and that kind of thing, um, use some, some graphite or, or plastic lubricant of some sort, you may actually be able to get it so you could actually move it, which would be pretty cool from a, from a straight 3D printed piece. But if you actually wanted to make this into an engine where you applied steam into the input and it moved, you'd probably have to uh, get it machined or machine yourself out of steel, so or out of whatever, the various materials, brass, steel, copper, bronze, I think is the other one. And Dave said, I materialize does uh, print with metal. And, right, and I think that is, uh, that's sintering, right? Uh, laser sintering, which yeah, which I, my assumption was that we were talking about this kind of printing, but uh, right. yeah, there's, yeah, there's more options besides what we can do in the office. So more to it than that. Um, where does this piece go right here? No. All right, so I got this piece 24, which looks like it's a variant of this. It looks like it goes on the end, 
but I can't see it in the drawing. I wonder if it's an optional piece, like you put that on one side to only have half as many engines. Let's see, what does 24 say over here? I may run, there's, there is no 24. It's like the 13th floor. Let's skip right. over it. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, 23, maybe, 25. <laughs> maybe you're right. It is a. I'm guessing optional. because it is the same size, the screw holes look the same, the dimensions are the same on all these, that uh, we're, so we're making a twin engine, like I was saying before. Two of these are going to sit side by side. And they would go back and forth. I'm wondering if you could actually just have one by uh, blocking off the other half. So that's possible. On to 25. Whoa, this is a crazy looking piece. I don't like when they have this much cross section. <laughs> that means there's detail in there that I gotta pay attention to. All right, so we start with a circle. Where are we at now? What's a 312? We got plenty of time. 7.5 meters. In the center, from this side, it looks like we have something like that this part right here, which is, it looks like five meters tall. And then it tapers, woo! What is this circle right here? Well, it looks like it's three, okay. So on the other side, I'll just model this upside down. We'll close that up. Looks like we got An eight, oops. Something's, going, something's being odd. It's not going to my circle command. Are you tired, SketchUp? It's Friday. <laughs> All right, so this is a four. And inside that is a 1.5 for that circle. And this comes out, this circle here goes up another two meters, total of seven, right? Yeah. This one right here comes to here and then an additional three. And this one right here has no thickness right now. Oh no, it does. What is that? Right, bring that back up. Just thought I'd fill the silence a little bit. Thanks. That was that was my internal chugging. That was was mo my monologue inside my head. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, man, what's going on? All right. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start by repairing my circles. Intersect faces with selections. Gonna break just on the outside so I can grab that interior piece and delete it. All right, that looks pretty good. That's that's. This is way too high, but. Upside down, because this should only be three above. That should go down to there. All right, so we're getting there. But one thing, so that's all good. Then here, at five millimeters in, it looks like it. There's a slight taper down to the smaller section. So. If I look right here, is this five right now? This is five. Okay, cool. So this is easy because I can just grab this right here and I can move it down one. And that will give me, there's my little tapered section there. I don't need this surface right here to maintain my solid. All right, almost there. Um, Flip it. Nope. Flip it upward like this. 
and get my uh, circles, my screw holes. I assume there's screw holes in here. Come up five, and I have a two millimeter circle here. So I'm gonna draw that one. And I'll just, simplicity's sake, spin that around 180 degrees. Does that go all the way through? It looks like it does. Cool. Come out the bottom. And that piece looks like it gets cut off on the edge. Looks like it's squared off. Ah, just when you thought you were done. All right, we'll come this way. 6.5, drag that straight down. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna take this and, and uh, use rotate to copy that over onto the other side. Nice. Um, are there nerves, lines, and surfaces in SketchUp? There are edges and surfaces. We are not nervy. So we do have some tools that will emulate um, kind of the final result. We do have subdivision extensions, uh, some tools along those lines, but they're, it's not a true NURBS modeler. So yeah, not, not our core competency. Whoops. All right. I don't know where this thing goes. Oh, here it is. It goes in, in here, of course. Duh. Oh, I also got to brass it up. Nope. All right, going to make that brass, and I'm going to click out. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> How many times? I mean, is everybody keep, this? This this is this is the thing. This is this is getting to be. It's an the issue. drinking game. It's an issue. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Oh. All right. <laughs> Get this lined up on this circle. Wait a minute. Those circles don't seem to be the same size. It does look like it goes into these. That small circle is supposed to be eight. This hole is supposed to be eight. <sighs> Wish there was somebody else to blame this on. Uh, I'll take it. You right. blame it on me. Come on, man. Say anything earlier? Seriously. All right. Let's see. Let's see how big this is. That's seven. What is it supposed to be? Not seven. It's supposed to be eight. Gotcha. Nope. It's supposed to be eight total. All right. Well, there you go. First mistake ever, and you guys got to see it here live. <laughs> I feel privileged. Um, yeah. So what you guys, I don't know if you guys caught that. What happened was I brought this piece back. Here's what, here's what I should actually do is I should grab this, slide it straight back, and break this. Um, and then pull that geometry out to here. Get rid of my extra stuff there. Oh, it has a hard time when you have surfaces connecting like that. Right, there we go. Let me smooth that back out. Mm -mm. Oops, too much. Cool. Now, let's see, let's see how that fits. Uh, let's do this. Let's let's bring it into the box with us. Let's sit on the inside here and snap her. Ooh. I like that. I like when stuff works out. All right, I'm gonna take this one option to slide it straight across to this edge. And look at how those two meet up. Oh man. So 
like they're beautiful, accurately machined parts. And I'm going to use rotate again, option to flip these around to the other side. And those four pieces are done. Look at that. That is nice. That's pretty cool. Still don't really know what all these things do, but it looks cool. That's some would say that's the most important part. Um, all right, still still rolling through. Uh, twenty five. Where's twenty six? It's like carriage return. Got to come back to their side now. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a fun little thing. Looks like a baby's bottle. It does, top. like a brass nipple or something. Mm -hmm. All right, so this looks like. All right, so this is completely something I would make out of or with Follow Me. So I want I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create this shape. And then uh, just do a follow me around a 48 sided circle. So some of these are kind of hard to figure out. Okay, so here I have a line that's 2.5 for sure. <laughs> I know that one. And then overall is 13. Just gonna get some lines in here so I can work from them. Oh man. Middle of that 13, this comes down three. And then that is four. Right, so that's half of it. The hole in the middle is three, so that's 1.5. And how far does that go in? Comes up at least this far. Whoops. I don't want to get rid of that just yet. There we go. All right, now we have. Right here, there's a radius of six. And this is where, so this is what I've been doing on these radii is, how wide is this? I feel like I don't quite have enough. Is this the same piece? No, it's 27. Actually, this probably doesn't matter machine-wise because this is not a fitting. It just kind of sticks out on the outside of the, uh, the engine. Um, so it's probably not a huge deal if this is perfect. It kind of... Actually, do I even need these? Hold up! <laughs> Reference material. Um, uh, Dave says, excellent work. Oh. Thanks, gentlemen. Enjoyable as always. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Dave. You too. Yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great one. These two nipples are front and center. These two pieces are front and center on the model. Uh, so James said brass nipple. That's definitely steampunk. Okay. You said it. I did. I'm sorry. I'm... It's my job, man. Professional up. All right. I go <laughs> that like that. Uh -huh. Just move it along. I'm going to do something like this. All right, so there's a radius of three here. So here's something I can do. I can come this way, three. I can grab my, I, I, always, I get this wrong all the time. I think it's this arc, yep. So I can come to my three down here, grab this, and just swing that over like that. That's a, an easy way to pull it if I have that dimension, except I drew it in the wrong spot. I want it right here, three. Let me try that again. All right, cool. And then this one is six. So I do the same thing here because I can come up to this point right here, which is where the arc starts from, draw a line this way, six, grab that arc again, go find my endpoint at six, click here, and then bring that this way. Mm, something doesn't feel right about that. It says it's a radius of six. That doesn't that doesn't quite look right. I don't know about you guys, but does that did I do that at six? Six meter radius. Hmm. 
How about that? Um, is it possible to watch this video later? Yep, it'll be um, uploaded just right to the YouTube channel. So uh, after we're done streaming, it takes a couple minutes, maybe a half hour, an hour or so to process the video, but it'll be up on YouTube afterwards. Try this again. I'm, a, I'm just going to keep this. I mean, really, this is basically a uh, decorative piece. This really isn't a uh, really not very functional. I'm kind of I want this to. Uh, I'm kind of what I'm thinking is. All right, so here I'm going to grab this circle. This is a circle of a six, a radius of six. And I'm going to pull it back to this line. This line is where my three arc is. And then from there, I'm going to grab it by this intersection and pull it back here. And there, I think, if I explode that with that, I've created what I think is being called out there. That looks good to me. All right, Matt bought in. We're good. <laughs> All right, and then I am this. the client in this case, of course. That's right. Well, I need a working steam engine by five o'clock this afternoon on my desk. So well, you might have a <laughs> some parts representing a steam engine if, if that's yeah. cool with you. Some assembly required. That's right. All right, so there we go. We did it. All right, I'm gonna make that a new component, which is of course number twenty-six. And that is not brass. I'm gonna put that on the bronze layer. Because we don't have anything else that's bronze right now. All right, and that goes, jump inside this box again. Oh, got lost for a second, then I came out the other end. We're good. And then the option is to copy that over. That's sharp. I don't know what, what it is, but it looks, uh, it's a thing. All right, uh, now we got some internals, internals, internals. What time we got? It's 3.30. All right, I'm gonna poke around a little bit longer. You guys let me know what you think about this. I mean, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. We got a lot of parts put together. Um, are, we, are we there? Have we, have we beat this thing? Um, is this something we should be spending more time on we want to come back at a later time do you want to just uh finish it and throw it up on warehouse and that's good enough what do you guys think where, where do you think we're at love to hear your thoughts I mean, because fact of the matter is at some point i'm probably going to finish this off <laughs> really the question is what do i do with it do you want it do i just tuck it into my sketchup files folder and be done um, you guys tell me. Tell me what, what I should be doing here. You got top top men working on it, like Indiana Jones. Just put it in a warehouse. That's right. Box it up, stick it in that warehouse. That's right. As long as you stamp something on the side, like uh, I don't remember what they put on that, but yeah. yeah. Finish it, even if not here. Yeah, like I said, that, that will happen. This will get done. It will get did. The question is, next week do we come in with a brand new project and I show you how it turned out? Or do you guys want to see the steps that happen to finish it? That's really the question I'm asking. So, I would vote to say finish it on your own time. All right, I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, but that's just my vote, personally. Um, it's more, it seems like more kind of the same stuff. Um, we've yeah, definitely seen you build, you know, two precision, like, whatever, a thousandth of the millimeter or whatever. Um, and you've taken on some simple pieces, some, like, complex pieces, some with internal mm -hmm. parts and stuff. And we've seen them kind of go together. But Sure, yeah, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. But I also want to uh, make sure I say this comment because it made me laugh out loud. That's priority. Uh, no project is finished until steam is coursing through its brassy veins. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. <laughs> and that's all projects. No project is finished.
That's right. Some projects never finish at all then. Your Iron Man mask. Take some uh, take some steam to that baby. Give it some brassy veins. Have you ever seen some of that some artists doing the uh, steampunk Iron Man? That's pretty cool. Hmm. Now we're talking. Um <clears throat> Um, let's see. There's some more interesting pieces in the model. Let's finish this next week together. Finish it. Finish it next week. Can you make threads? Can threads be made? That is a thing that does exist. Today, if you guys want to see threads, go check our YouTube channel out. And there is yeah, a... Uh, yeah, maybe Matt can throw the link up. But that is something specifically that I've done. I did it in the free version online, so that's how I roll up my sleeves. Shows nothing up my sleeves. We are on SketchUp free. Um, and uh, that was something we did. We just made, went in and made, made uh, screws using just native commands. So that's up there. There's extensions to do that too. Um, I think draw whorl w o h r l is an extension that'll draw threads because they're not as simple as you think they are. I, I look at them and you mean I mean I think I've seen them on that that TV show How It's Made where I saw screws get made and you know the cutter just kind of grabs the thing just runs real quick. But there's actually some science to you know that that triangle shape and in SketchUp there's a challenge to keeping that totally vertical against the face of the the round rod, so it's a. Uh, I got a lot more respect for for uh, those than I, I did before. Yeah, I know. There's a there's a color correction issue with my hands once it crosses over the threshold. <laughs> says, they, somebody said it looks like I'm underwater, and it's just it's kind of type type type. It's my Aquaman thing. <laughs> Yeah, Dave leaves as soon as we start discussing thread modeling. <laughs> Dave, I, th I think Matt called it out. Go onto our thread, look for, go onto the forum and look for Dave R because he has some serious thread model stuff going on. Pretty cool. Um, as far as bringing it live in MS Physics, that's a question for someone who knows how to use MS Physics well. I've seen some incredible stuff in MX physics, birds flapping their wings and um, cars. I mean, actual like being able to control cars that drives on a racetrack done in MS physics. Sweet, cool stuff, but I will admit I am not that guy. <laughs> I love modeling, but man, I, I, uh, I've tried. I've tried several times. Last time I tried, we were Josh and I did a live thing around the Olympics time and we shot a bobsled into the lower atmosphere. It was not right. There's, there's numbers and things to consider. Yeah, that was the one, bobsled. Eh, it didn't go good. Um, all right, well, I can't say for sure what we're doing next week at this point. So either we'll come back and we'll spend more time on this or it will be done. One of those two things will happen. Or there's a third possibility that I won't have gotten to it. That could happen too. Um, odds are good. This will be uh, done one way or another. We can check it out, take a look at it, and I'll chuck it up on 3D Warehouse at some point. So, yeah, that's, that's, those are all things. <laughs> Let me check it out. Here's uh, Dave's, oh, that's way too big. Woo. Day, uh, Dave's, some of the SketchUp stuff that he's done. But similar kind of stuff, right? Machine. Mm -hmm. um, very, very uh, cool stuff. Knurling. Oh, he's a knurler. No question. Yeah. Yeah. I just figured I would. I would. Uh, Throw together the pieces that I have now. So we can look at what we have thus far. Yeah, sounds great. I'll slide this. Ooh, that doesn't look like it's quite the right size. <laughs> He's 
one early dude. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, have a great weekend, of course. Or perhaps if it's Saturday morning, have a great, well, still have a great weekend. It's just a little bit shorter yeah. than... Have, have a great rest of your courses. weekend. Yeah. Oops, that didn't line up right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope, still in the right spot. Oh, oh, have oh boy, so crazy. There we go. Whew. Matt said, "Have a great weekend," and uh, my brain assumed he was talking to him, and <laughs> just kind of took off on me. All right, here we go. Grab all this. Roll this right back. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Cool. So I just don't know where this guy goes. I got him. I just don't know where he goes. Oh, it looks like he goes in the end of the thing I just put inside. Okay, so we'll do it real quick. Slide that out. Oh, look at that. Look at those screw holes. No wonder. That, that's... I probably shouldn't sound surprised, but I really do like the thought of creating these disintegrated pieces, creating these all separately, and then actually seeing them... When they fit together, it's satisfying, work for sure. ...afterwards. So we'll take that. Oh, look at that. <sighs> Perfectly machined. I wonder if there's supposed to be a gasket there too. I don't see one. I don't see one called out there. So, but uh, yeah, so that's going to eventually have a, uh, I believe ramrod is the term. It's going to go back and forth. Uh, there's going to be a piston inside here. It's going to spin the, the thingy and then the wheel's going to spin when gas goes into somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. Well, oh, that's a problem. I actually missed a whole there's a hole right in the bottom of uh, this box. Uh, it's in the middle, and it's a four millimeter hole. Can't leave that. Can't leave it. Can't leave it. Well, and don't forget to save, of course. Ah, oh, dang it. You're right. I should save. That's thick brass. Can't find the other side. Keep going. Pull through. Did it. All right. Now save. Bradley Design. I get a lot out of Aaron thinking through his line of attack. Learn something every week. This was a great exercise to go through. Kind words. Very Thank nice. Thank you very of you much. To say. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is this is fun for me too. I love the whole concept of designing things and figuring out how stuff goes together. So uh, this is fun for me as well. I appreciate uh, hearing that you guys like to do it because, or hear that you guys like to see it because I like to do it. So awesome. Well, awesome. this is what we got for our steam engine this week. Um, turned out pretty cool, my opinion. So far, so good. Uh, this is a lot bigger than the ones I did before. <laughs> the ones I did before were like two hours of work. This is a lot more pieces. I think those are also like 20 pieces. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, like I said, one way or another, it'll get finished. We'll see it. Um, but hopefully, we see you guys next week. And again, thank you, all of you, for coming. Because, like we always say, without you, it would just be me and Matt sitting in a room. So, <laughs> right. appreciate you guys swinging by. And uh, all your input, comments, feedback. Uh, this is good. Yeah. And hey, good job by you. Again, another you. well-modeled stream. I, I think so. It turned out pretty good. Yeah, lurking from work is the way to do it. That's, <laughs> anybody calls you out, just go, oh, yeah, watch this video. So I'm figure out how to do something. SketchUp's real important. Well, hopefully learning happens, too. That's, that's also good stuff. So. Also, uh, did you see what Dave said about rotate the cylinder and it's sleeve ports. 90 degrees the ports should face towards the center you talking about this guy right here 
There, there they are. Yeah. I was just thinking, how the heck does the uh, the steam <laughs> get out of that box? <laughs> and uh, I was earlier thinking, what are those little rectangle cutouts I made for? Now, let's let's pretend we're steam. <laughs> Toot, 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 toot. Mm. Oh, I can get into. Boom. You're I'm inside through. the cylinder. All right, Dave. We're steaming. Next time I see you, I owe you a, a, whatever you want. I'm guessing the sleeve should probably come out a little further, too, but I guess it depends on how far the piston travels. Good call, good call. Thank you, Dave. Uh-oh, I got something overlapping here. Oh, I think this, this just isn't. There we go. All right. I'm really going to stop now. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to let it be Friday, the end of Friday. Not the fun part of Friday, the part where, well, that's Friday's still good. Thanks for watching. See you. Safe.